All right, we're going live on Facebook in five, four, three, two, and one. All right. Hey, we're live. Uh, hey, folks, we have a, a really, really good interview uh, for you guys tonight with um, Kevin James Mosley, who is a um, the victim of uh, human trafficking. Um, you know, uh, and uh, uh, why don't you just kind of give our viewers a brief, a brief introduction, uh, Kevin, for us, and then uh, you know, like kind of segue into your story for us. Sure. Uh, my name is Kevin Mosley. Um, I'm currently in Mexico seeking asylum from the United States government. Um, when we get into my story, it will start when I was roughly two, uh, being trafficked by law enforcement via my mother uh, to be used as a blackmailing tool. Uh, this escalated into things with social services, uh, within like CRF group homes, Orangewood group homes in Southern California, being sent to places like Kearney, Nebraska uh, for illegal things. And then it evolved in what's when I was an adult for blackmail and uh, the murder of Crystal Rissinger, uh, harassing individual people, other people within law enforcement to portray, to like corner people psychologically to do what these people wanted, wanted these people to do, like Jeff, uh, sorry, Garrett Cormier, Rob Campbell, Luke Campbell, this individual named Jeff, all have FBI military backgrounds. Um, and escalated into many, many other things, but not only within the Crystal Richinger case, but other notable cases, some of which I've mentioned on other lives. Um, and also escalated with my own issue, again, me going into Canada seeking asylum, uh, and certain things happening there uh, that again evolved into me being where I'm at right now in Mexico. Uh, I'm 33 years old and I have like 31 or 32 years of story to like dig into really. So you say this started when you were two? Uh, from uh, like, I mean, I don't remember like this specific date, but like my first memory, I was roughly two. And it was the story that I mentioned earlier uh, going into the apartment in San Diego, California. Uh, do you want me to go through the story again? Yeah, for the viewers, that'd be fine. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, my first story was, yeah, two years old, going to an apartment in San Diego with my mother. There was a guy sitting in a reclining chair that in my 20s, I would find out his name was uh, Garrett Cormier. When we walked in, my mom uh, was like holding my hands and uh, like to, to my right. And the guy in the reclining chair said, you have to uh, that my mom had to have me sit on his lap, but he couldn't have me sit on his lap, otherwise that he'd be responsible. Uh, and then my mom had me sit on his lap, and then she went on the other side of him and started taking pictures uh, because it was like a tool to blackmail. Like he knew he was being blackmailed, um, and uh, but it was like something that he had to do. Um, and then I remember the event slightly different than how he told, would tell me how he remembers uh, remembers uh, come within a conversation that we would have in my twenties. I remember sitting on his lap, feeling pain, screaming, and then he threw me at a wall. He says, uh, I, he was worried that I was going to remember his face, and then he threw me at a wall because of that, and that's when I started screaming. Um, yeah, and then I find out, yeah, later that that guy's name was, or the, yeah, his name was Garrett Cormier, and then while he was investigating his own trafficking case in my 20s, it would have, I would, it was, put out there that he was the one, the first person that molested me and the, one of the main uh, individuals involved in his trafficking case that he was investigating. Was he like in and out of your life between that time in your 20s or was it just the one time and then you don't see him again until, you know, you're tw in your 20s? So there's only one really strong memory I have, like I mentioned, uh, when I was two. And then I remember my mom on two different occasions taking me out on a boat with, with I'm 99.9% .9 sure it was Garrett. Uh, and then I remember, and then because we would talk about it again in my 20s. Uh, and um, they said that they took me on the boat because they were going to throw me off the boat and say like I fell off the boat. But my mom said she couldn't do it. Like she just at that time, she still cared for me. I guess that just a little too much. I remember turning to her because, uh, like, I was sitting on the edge of the boat, and like, she, I feel like a push, and I look back, and she turns. She's looking at Garrett, saying, "I, I can't do this, something or other. Can you do it or whatever?" And then they, they just, they didn't do it. Uh, but in my twenties, 
uh, I was going around the country for various reasons, partially against my will, partially, it's very convoluted, we can get into it more, but um, I got picked up by law enforcement and this law enforcement officer uh, stopped me and said, there's a guy that works for the F there's a guy in California that works for the FBI. He wants to talk to you about some stuff that may or may not have happened to you when you were in group homes and maybe when you were younger. Uh, do you want to talk about talk to him, uh, talk to the FBI agent about um, the stuff that happened to you when you were a kid? Uh, and I'm like, yeah, sure, of course. She's like, of course I want to like just resolve these issues. Um, me not even realizing the serious how serious it is at this point. I just thought I was like sexually assaulted. A couple times like here and there or not say or like not to say it like that but like i just thought it was like sexual assault and that like uh that sexual assaults that were unrelated to each other uh throughout my timeline within social services and with my mother etc uh i didn't uh realize until having these conversations uh that was much bigger because like throughout these conversations within the first conversation Garrett was asking me if I remembered, like just normal, what I would think are normal questions, like who do I remember, uh, who might be able to uh, speak out um, against this stuff, like advocate for me, cooperate my story, any other witnesses, et cetera, uh, anything like that. Um, and I said, I was like, yeah, like here's, you know, like, so you have group homes, Orangewood, this person, this person, a childhood, Mm, like like tons of people tons and tons of people and then at the end of the first conversation he said well because we were just going on for like at least an hour or two and he's like well uh we're like for me he's like continue traveling around and i'll have law enforcement continue to pick you up and we'll continue the conversation and when we have your case ready we'll have you come back to California and we'll get these guys. It was only after about a year, maybe two years of conversating with, with him, getting like going around, getting picked up by law enforcement, telling more of my story, mentioning more witnesses, more stuff, remembering more stuff, et cetera. One law enforcement officer that I was in the car with uh, asked me, asked, sorry, asked Garrett, why don't you put him in witness protection? And then that's when Garrett said, well, you fucked up now. I'm the first person that fucked him. Um, and then from there, things evolved very differently. Basically, it was less in picking me up to investigate my case, more so picking me up to uh, like harass sounds me, like, beat me sounds down. Sounds like tie so, up loose ends, you know? Like, yeah, no, what, does does, know? what does he know? Let's what loose ends are we got out there so we can tie them up so you know nothing gets out. No, that's exactly yeah, that's exactly what it was. Just remembering people uh, for him to go. I like for people for them to go after. Right. Um, and uh, yeah. And then like, I mean, this, the, the, series, the one thing that's hard to really dive into is the differences, the things that were different within my life, within the context of our relationship, um, pre him mentioning that he was involved, like, you know, the first person that trafficked me uh, to after. So before that, it was like me just being able to like, okay, here's like me being molested here. Here's me, my mom using me to frame people. Here's me like this stuff here. And then in my twenties, there was a short period of time of them. Like when it came out that they were involved in my trafficking, there was a short period of time of them, uh, harassing me, like just like picking me up, like messing with me, saying stuff, just fucking with me in various ways. Uh, and then through various things that I did on my own, I was trying to set myself up in a position to be to have more power, I guess, in the situation and to be like less of a, like, mm, like less of a active target. Right. Um, and so I, I started like talking about different ideas I've had for different things. And like, there's just, it's hard to like just dive into and mention like in shorthand, but like right. something that I can, that I'd be, that I could dive into more, but yeah, it's, it evolved into so much, so many more other things. Well, what I'm curious is how did your mom get involved in this? Was this something that she was thrown into when she was a kid or, I mean, I how believe, does one go about that? I believe so. Uh, there's a few things that make it, that make me question. Uh, so there's two main things, main ideas that I have. Cause my aunt Debbie said that she got involved with these people in high school. Uh, and then ever since then it ruined because my aunt Debbie is my dad's side of the family. And she's like, ever since then, it ruined the, the, my dad's side of the family. Uh, and then 
Uh, but then mm, at some point in time after it came out that these people were trafficking me and I was still getting picked up, I want to say it was like Missouri or something. I got picked up by law enforcement and this sheriff, I think it was a sheriff, might have been state patrol, showed me a picture of my mom sitting on her adoptive dad's lap doing what I was made to do when I was like two. Oh, so she was in the system also. Like Yeah, she, she was adopted when she was two. And then it, she was used according to the share, according to the person that showed me the picture and the back of the police car that my mom was also being used as a trafficking blackmailing tool. And that through that, uh, because of like that incident, whatever, he was showing me this to be like, like, look, like we all are, have to do things we don't like to do, like buck up, you know, things will right. change. Kind of like, I don't know, just like, every, like kind of like there's tons of people that get molested and used for human trafficking. Just don't really yeah. care about it. It's, <laughs> just blow it off. Just go along not, with it. Yeah, not no, something really, the yeah. average everyday citizen thinks about, you know, on, on that kind of a level. Yeah. Right. But they just want you to go along with it. They want your permission because they you have they have to have your permission to be able to do universal laws, to be able to do these things to you. They, you have to know about them in some way. They have to give you that knowledge before they can come against you like that. So yeah, here, let us just come go along with us. They, you know how many times they've tried to do that with me? Well, if you just go along with us, we'll make this kidnapping just a little bit easier. It's, it's yeah, ludicrous. No, I mean, <laughs> For me, it was like a lot because like around this, this was after it came out that, you know, these people were involved in my trafficking um, and like it was, things were just getting more and more heavy. And then I, I started like I was saying I've mentioned before to them uh, that I was like I had recordings and that I was going to like, like go public with it unless X, Y and Z happened. And it was just more of like a cat and mouse game. Because I, at that time, I didn't have recordings or anything like that. I just used it as a, as a tool to lie to right. like for, my, for my own protection. Um, and then like, I would like, I was just, I don't know. I was just trying to play like a big game, so to speak, to try and beat them out psychologically or something. Like, I don't really know. Like, so you're my... trying to gaslight the gaslighters. <laughs> no, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah really? I was like, like, I was saying, like, I mean, I was telling them that I was leaving, uh, uh, what's it called? Like little recording devices and like very so I would like go all over the country like all over the country I said I left recording devices and like all these different uh people's like like uh, politicians offices and like law enforcement buildings uh <laughs> etc and like just really like going like hardcore with, with some bullshit on my end um uh, just to gaslight them or whatever not really to gas I wasn't even aware of the term for me it was just like trying to set it up to where like like I told them at one point in time that I had a bunch of stuff that a friend was holding and that if anything happened to me, that she was going to go, right. yeah, that she was going to go public with it. And I just, the whole thing was fabricated. That, that whole part was fabricated. Oh, I'm sorry. No problem. <laughs> Exit out of your tabs, Dobby. Whatever one's calling it. Ringing from, I don't have it. Hold on, I'm sorry. Sorry. Go ahead, Kevin. Sorry. Um, no, yeah, um, I mean, no, you're, you're fine. Um, I mean, yeah, no, the, I mean, there's just, gosh, so, I mean, there's just a, uh, a, that's, like, kind of, like, the premise of my relationship with these people past the trafficking thing, like, past the, the stuff when I was, like, uh, under 21 or so, and then from 21 and above, that was, like, the premise of, of our relationship, and then from there, I like there's just a lot of stuff that different happened like it, it, like and I say this I say this in this way to show because like I've gotten some flack from people uh so like on some of my stuff that I've mentioned like the Crystal Richinger case which is a, a national case like her husband was on Dr. Phil whatever I have tons of recordings of of that stuff I have tons of evidence to back up um much of which I much of which I say regarding that I also have an incident with a person that it, uh named Philip Hamilton has a documentary on them in uh, Ontario, Canada, um, an incident that happened there, and also with an individual, and you know, as I mentioned, a documentary on him, there's also an individual, a kid named Caleb Bedreau that was murdered in Deming, New Mexico that I knew, uh, and his Deming. story was on, was on the radio, and I mentioned the radio, the document, the document, uh, uh, and the uh, Dr. Phil Fox News Crystal Richinger story, because part of, uh, to give context to what I'm about to say, because one of the things that we talked about, uh, and this was 
mm, towards the end of our really having conversations is we talked about the George Floyd, the George Floyd case years before it ever happened, target, targeting him specifically. Uh, <laughs> Your dogs are not happy. Some of us are going on. <laughs> I don't think they, I think they call, I think they're calling out that, uh, what he just said about the, uh, the George Floyd thing. I think he's like, yeah, it's corruption. All right. Premeditated. No, yeah, no, it's, that's, I mean, like, and that's the thing people get, like my, my one thing that the people that are involved in my trafficking, like my brother, he'll like bring that up be like, oh, like George Floyd, like, look how dumb my brother looks or something like that. Just because my brother knows, like he was, he was involved in that, in that, the whole scenario, but he's trying to portray that. And so when I mentioned Crystal Richinger, uh, Dr. Phil, I mentioned the, do- the guy in the document, uh, uh, the documentary uh, in Ontario, Canada, and I mentioned Caleb Boudreau, who had the whole radio thing on him. Uh, I mentioned that to give like, con- like I'm not just like, and all that stuff that I just mentioned, I have tons of evidence backing that up. I don't have anything backing up the George Floyd case thing, uh, my the George Floyd thing, but I mentioned that because A, it's the truth. I like, I don't, I'm just mentioning it because it's just, it's part of the story and people are wondering like, how did you get to where you are now, et cetera, and this is just part of the context. Um, but for those that like George Floyd is a big case to people that are not familiar with what the government's doing. Like that is something notable to everyone because it's just what they've heard about. It is, it is every day for my situation. There are cases, there's things way bigger than the George Floyd case that we spoke about, um, that we were involved in talking about and like planning, so to speak. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's just, I mean, the context of people want to grill me on this stuff. Cause like, that's a, like, I mean, this is one thing I say this stuff too. It says like these claims, this, the stuff that I already have evidence out for people to look at is claims that I've made that people have grilled me on whatever. And people can continue to grill me on. I'm happy about that. But there's also parts to my story explicitly after I was 21 that no one has really spoken to me about. No one has really asked me questions about. And so when I mentioned stuff about George Floyd, when I mentioned this stuff, I'm not just mentioning it like, because I don't want people to believe me out, uh, outright. I want people to debate me and to criticize me and to really like tear tear me down, so so to speak, to really get to the the facts of the situation. And so right. I mentioned George Floyd so people can talk to me about that. Not so I can just like wave it around as like, hey, no fucking some random ass person that died by police. There's thousands of people that die by police every day. Right. Um, yeah. But that specific case, that was like before, I, I don't want, I don't, I can't remember what year it happened, but it was between 2010 and 2012 is when the vast majority of our conversations took place about like planning stuff, about like, and uh, not even just targeting like individuals, um, like uh, like the people that I've mentioned before, but also tar- targeting law enforcement, targeting uh, like to, like we would go after law enforcement to harass and like stalk law enforcement or get people to do that, so that these individuals in law enforcement would be perceived as if like people are after them, or that you know, and they just it would just get these individuals on a on a path like um it's i forget what the term what they these people used i think they ca- called it guiding the arrow so you like you set someone up on like a path and then you just kind of like guide them down the route and so like you have someone that you're scaring to death you have a law enforcement officer that you're making them be perceived that people are following to them to their houses they know right. about their family know about their kids and they just get, become more reactive and then it's you like social engineering warfare. yeah exactly social engineering 100 and that's we do stuff like like that with tons of people like i mean like i can't i don't know like I, it happens to people every day and they don't know it i mean the majority yeah, of people have true. this kind of thing going on and have no clue that it's even happening to them yeah i know there's tons it doesn't of, like, have I mean, to be in a negative way like in a like a way to make you go insane it's just anything to make you go down a certain path they so much is put out in society to keep us distracted basically slaves no slaves they just want to keep us slaves yeah yeah no yeah and that and that's re- that's really what it is there's tons of people that have things happen to them every day and they just have because like that's the whole point of committing any sort of crime or committing like espionage or whatever uh, kind of secret crap whatever is to get away with it like you're not going to 
do something that like, mm -hmm. hey guys, let's, let's make a secret plan about doing something and then run around with like flags and blow horns. Um, right. And so like, yeah, no, there's, there's people like, even not, again, like what you kind of said, like things that aren't dubious, things that aren't bad, just to set someone up in a certain place at a certain time or to set someone up on a certain path so that something happens later down the line that could be potentially useful. Um, right. like I, like I mentioned, it's, it's, it's such an entwined web. It's so um, like a sophisticated like system, so to speak, that like it's not meant to be obviously problematic. It's, it's supposed to be like, well, like these those actions that they did, that's, that could be normal. Like that's, that could be regular, but it's, it's, just, it's, I don't know. It's just a pull the wool over people's eyes. So to speak. Oh yeah. Yeah, completely. Yeah. Um, that's, that's, um, that's some common tactic because, you know, people don't realize how easy, you know, your average everyday Joe can be uh, manipulated. If, you know, if you, if you know how to, how to, uh, how to trigger somebody emotionally, you can do exactly what you're talking about and guide them down a certain path if you know how they're going to react. And then most people don't realize that, you know, I, I noticed, I, I learned that very early on in life. You know, I'm, I was always been a very, very, um, a keen observer of human behavior and uh, body language and if you observe and take the time to look and see people's reactions you can actually you can actually very effectively implement that kind of a uh, um pointing the arrow so to speak as you said mm, yeah Gu guiding the arrow yeah guiding the arrow yes correct well you know a lot of people are handlers they handle people all the time and don't even realize that they're even handling people I, they have people so um complicit and so brainwashed and so manipulated in society in general that these things go on and people like for instance people don't realize attorneys are handlers stop hiring a person to handle you it's that yeah, I, simple they are not well, attorney is to to a turn is to a turn someone over so an attorney is taking you from your god and turning you over to this false god that you know, these judges that, you know, pass these statutes, oh, bow to the statutes, right? Go before a false God. Now what? You're sinning. And I mean, statutes, people are not laws. They are uh, just are, the same as like uh, attended tax codes. They're not laws. They're codes or and they're statutes. They're statutes. Those are not and laws. They're really only made for government. They're not even made for, for the man, for you and I, that those statutes and laws are for government employees, not for man. Well, even well, I mean, even I'm I can't really, I can't speak to the to the technicalities of legality when it comes to stuff like that. But when it comes to the utility, I can speak to that. And so, any nation that you have, any organization, any business, anything like that that you have, its goal is to make it to the next day, is to uh, sustain longevity for as long as possible. And so, if that is, if that means being honest and having the best products or being the most free and open place then that's what they're going to do but if they believe that it has that it has to involve uh bribery and corruption and human trafficking and whatever and, and that's if that's what it needs to take to sustain longevity for an, a nation then that's what people who are in charge of sustaining the nation are going to do um and it's constant games like i mean even within the u.s marshals fbi cia there's uh on a top level basis uh they harass and attack and do false flags against each other because the people the majority of people within any agency are not aware of the frivolousy or the falsehoods uh that are being made against them and that all that does is perpetuate the necessity for these uh these groups these organizations to continue like if the FBI had nothing more to do that, you know, who would need the FBI anymore? The CIA, blah, blah, blah. So we just go after each other. It's like war. It's like how um, different nations will do war games uh, for like practice uh, against other, against uh, allies. Like, you know, they'll do little war games against each other. And it's a similar thing uh, that different, that, you know, CIA, FBI will do against uh, different agencies. But there's also a level of, uh, false no, no, see another level of falsehood behind it i guess i should say is where the people that are involved in it involved in investigating uh you know this cyber attack or something they're not aware that the people actually who started it are on another agency or at the same agency that they're in um it's just to 
it's it's multifaceted. It's not just to do any particular thing. It's it's to maintain industry and organization. It's to uh, create opportunities for individuals to be compromised uh, in a in, in a sense that then you can take advantage of uh, vulnerable people. It's to lengthen the reach of different um, uh, agencies like FBI and CIA. Um, yeah, it's just. And at the end of the day, what do you yeah. have? A false reality. Yeah, no, yeah. Real, I mean, just, you know, your reality is no longer real with all that foundation and all that lying. How, how do you expect your reality to be real around you when they're creating your reality? Yeah, 100%. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, there's a lot of manipulation when it comes to like the like trafficking and manipulating uh, people. Like, even like, so, like, there's a lot of stuff that happened when I was a kid, when I was in elementary school, middle school, high school, where there was different kids that were used to um, harass kids as part of like the trafficking, but the kids may or may not have been aware of it. There's some kids that are aware of uh, that they are aiding in trafficking and they just don't care because they're either getting something out of it or they're like, you know, they know what life, like my brother would aid in trafficking or like doing things to other people, knowing when we were, I didn't know this when we were kids, but he would do this when we were kids. Um, and he just didn't want to get molested anymore. Or he didn't want to get in trouble for doing nothing wrong anymore. And so he just was like, yeah, like I'll do whatever I need to do to make it to the end of the day. And that's kind of that's where his, that's where he's at psychologically. Now. Fight or flight. Yeah, fight or flight. And then one thing I, I don't think he realizes is that like once they're like, let's say like tomorrow, if I were to like pass away from like a heart attack or something, like there's no reason for them to keep him anymore. Like he's, I mean, in most cases, there's reasons to keep people for so that you could use them for like different things. But like the brain, my brother is a massive loose end. And I don't think he realizes that like, I don't know. I, I personally think that like, if something were to happen to me or something like that, then he'd be thrown under the bus near immediately. Um, he may not you're be. You're frozen on my end. <laughs> I froze. Dottie froze or, or we froze. Oh, maybe he's freezing up. Give it a second. Kevin, you there? Are you there? Here. Oh, there you are. Okay, you're back. You just froze up for a little bit for a second there. Um, also, I wanted to uh, to keep uh, on the uh, on the YouTube stream. We got somebody uh, posting some uh, some 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 links to some adult sites that were not that I thought that was kind of odd considering the, the podcasts we're doing. I removed them, but don't please don't post links like that. We're not trying to. We're not. That's not where. No, don't do that. That's not cool. Probably some spammer or oh, something. Uh, or yeah, or what do they call them? Trolls or whatever. Yeah. You know, when you're in the flight or um, fight or flight mindset, um, your brain no longer can produce the chemicals you need to learn. So your ability to learn just goes to shit. And, and, and um, to think objectively and critically, too. Yeah. And your um, brain is no longer able to produce the chemicals it needs to keep your immune system healthy. So basically, when you stay in that um, state of mind um, for too long, your only guarantee is disease and death, you know, like you're, cause you're not going to stay healthy and then you're not going to get an education. So you're going to stay in poverty. Cause a lot of times these are people that are in, you know, low income poverty, you know, so you get um, stuck that this is actually another one of their games to keep you in as a slave in their system. So they keep you in a place where they want you. So they create, you know, a lot of this stuff in a lot of these neighborhoods um, like that fight or flight kind of um, situations just so you don't wake up, you don't um, get an education, you, you know, you don't further your family, your bloodline. So you don't, you know, do more than what they want you to do. They want to keep you in these complicit places like Ferguson, Missouri, we had all that craziness and, and that was ran by Soros and there was actors in St. Louis during that time creating all this chaos. And what it turned out to be was 
it is the first smart city going in in Missouri in St. Louis. So what they had to do was destroy the city to rebuild the city to put in the, the 5G, the towers and make it a smart city. So that's what they came behind and did. That's why they set that whole thing up. I, I, I don't know anything about that, but one thing I, I think is really, uh, I can't really speak to anything about that. But one thing I think is really interesting that I don't think people realize is when it comes to like human trafficking uh, or drug trafficking or anything like that. Um, and one thing that like how my brother got involved is like, I don't know if people like, no, most people probably haven't looked this up. Like I haven't looked this up, but I, so I presume, but like, I don't think anyone can go on like LinkedIn or Google and look up like how to apply for a human trafficking job. No, uh, how to no. apply for like a drug right. trafficking. Yeah, it's not something you can just do on your every average everyday site because you know it's not one of those things that like that. It's just not. A question that should pop into people's minds is how are the how are the people resources the, in the sense like how are the the employment able to sustain itself in a job like like human trafficking like how do people gravitate towards that job and i know but for people who don't know and i think it's like that's something should, people should think about majority of people that are involved in you in trafficking people uh the vast majority are victims of trafficking themselves um like that's there's and then a lot of these individuals that are victims of trafficking themselves that go on to traffic people are also used as scapegoats in cases later on in the future it's like a snake eating its own tail it's you take a step of you know creating an industry and then you use resources the people within the industry that you're using to abuse uh, you raise them up to become abusers and then the ones that you that are abusers now you use law enforcement the good guys to go after just those guys you get these like middle to low middle to maybe high middle uh participants you don't mention any of the kids or very very few of the kids all those kids still go missing like no like the epstein case what kids were involved no one knows who were they sold to huh? like just know. just epstein and Julian right. maxwell that was the whole case it was muted but, like, the whole case is freaking muted People know because you know why it's trickling down into our front rooms. It's our children they're taking. Yeah. I mean, at this point, it's like people people are waking up on it. I mean, at it's, this point, it's, it's just become so obvious. I think most people are kind of hip to it or just, you know, the symptoms are wrong, you know, but like there's a lot more, uh, a lot more, uh, a lot more due diligence needs to be done and a lot more people that need to start speaking out too, I think. Yeah. No, 100%. And then, um, I mean, there's just, I don't know. Um, like, what, what was I saying? So like you have these different, I, I was going to say something How do else. people end up working in the industry, in the human trafficking industry is what you're talking about. So yeah. they're victims themselves. Yeah. These, so yeah. These people who become victims end up becoming perpetrators because they're groomed and many are forced into it. I don't think like people think that like, like I've gotten messages and people are like, Oh, like if you're if you, this happened, like some of my trafficking happened when I was over 18. And they're like, if you were over 18, how did you let this happen to you? I would have just left. And it's like, you can't just leave the planet. Like, I don't think you realize how powerful the human trafficking industry is and how powerful like the U S government is and how well the connections between, and not just U S government, like they're the only like Mexico, Canada, the UK, Saudi Arabia, like most countries are involved in human trafficking, et cetera, because it's beneficial to the government, right. like to their respective governments, as well as, you know, the government that we're speaking about, the United States. Well, um, all of that is powerful, the governments and all that, but you know, what else is very powerful is the brain. And yeah. I know that, um, and this is probably another reason why people end up staying in that situation maybe even you um after you know people say you were old enough to leave but all your programming um that you get in your subconscious is done by the age of seven so everything that you learn up to seven is programmed into the subconscious and that is where you act out 90 percent of your day from so the minute you start thinking you go into your subconscious mind the only time we stay conscious in our conscious mind is when we fall in love and that's the only time we naturally produce those chemicals. Other than that, we have to go into the present moment and make sure, you know, we have to tell ourselves, 
um, after that, 90% of our day is from the subconscious and we act from there. So if your programming is to traffic and that's all you know, that's what else are you going to do? It's in your programming. Yeah, well, I mean, like I said, like a lot, a lot of people aren't, don't even want to. And like, I, like, I wasn't involved in trafficking. I was involved, like, there's a lot of things I was involved in that we can get into. There's a few things that I'm not proud of, a few things that I think are really fucking cool, actually. Uh, but, uh, like, not the use, utility, but the function, I guess. We're not, maybe I'm being function, but not, maybe the other way around. But um, there's a, there's, a lot of people that are uh, affected by this, again, yeah, they're, they're unwilling, but also like you were saying about how to psychologically mess with someone to get them to do what you want them to do without them even knowing it. Uh, and th that is heavily involved in trafficking too. Like there's a lot of yeah. people that are involved in trafficking that do not know that they actually just traffic someone or something. And to most people, they think, how could that happen? Like, Some of them don't I even know they're being I would have noticed the kid crawl like you know banging the the little uh cage and like you know like ringing the metal cup on the on the <laughs> and that's just right. not how trafficking happens like no trafficking like it's it's like people think people that don't know the definition of it is yeah. you know one of the reasons people don't understand what it is they don't even know the true definition to um what trafficking is yeah no yeah you know? i mean it's i mean not i mean it's not only the definition it's just like the general like how things happen and like like a lot of people that have spoken to me about trafficking have asked me questions about it i they have i believe they have the premise that again that it's just like 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 when i talk about the stuff in group homes they think that like every kid was like you know in a cage in group homes with like little tags on them they're like every all the kids are like in it together and we're just like you know, come on guys, it's planned to like get out of this and like take their little chains off our hands and like <laughs> stuff like that. But it's just like, not how it is. It's like most of the kids, we don't talk about each other's issues. We're not like in it together. We're just other kids. We're in fact, a lot of staff members and social services pit other kids against each other. Oh, I can, yeah, I can see um, that. And it's like, it's, you know, like you, it's it, there's a level of maintenance so that the victims the witnesses everyone involved could be like oh like that was unusual or that was nor, uh, nor uh inappropriate but there's like this norm normality that i can like catch on to and so like you know, at CRF group homes, if it was like, you know, people coming in every day and like kids just being like tied to like fucking like beds or something like that, then every single kid and everyone who worked there could be like, oh no, that's, you know, this is obviously wrong. But with you being more secretive, then you can, and be more, uh, um, how do I say, covert uh, about it. You can then only implement certain staff members and certain people like judges and certain people uh to do certain things that you don't even have to have people to be aware of the full thing you could have like a staff member do something that they know is illegal but they don't know that it's for human trafficking they right. think that they're doing that they're falsifying paperwork to get the kid into a place where they need to be to be safe not into not not to be actually trafficked. right people. to actually be trafficked they think that they're, they're helping but you know, in my experience, I found um, in St. Louis, my experiences with the court system, um, I find that everybody in the court system, everybody that I've dealt with, they all know what they're doing. There's no one that's being tricked into any of it. Um, they're all well aware in, in the, my situation, in my experience, everybody knows. Everybody's, you know, protecting everybody. Everybody's covering up for everybody, knowingly and willingly doing this the entire yeah, no. law community i i think so too and uh someone commented on my end they're like parents breed their own children no and I, i've experienced that too and this is like i experienced children like not only with myself my mom trafficking me etc uh i i know and i i i my statistics on this might be blown up blown out of proportion but i think the vast majority uh, I, to be safe, I'm going to say at least 60% of the population of the planet 
would even those who advocate strongly against this idea and they truly believe themselves that they would be against it they would 100 percent do whatever they need to do to their own kids themselves or to have someone else do it if it means them being able to go home and sleep in their own bed and have some semblance of peace at night they might be like oh like you know i, I just want to protect me and my family well we're gonna go after your family it's oh, probably more family. than that um i only yeah. say that because of how many people are quiet how many people yeah. stay quiet? How many people are talking? A one percent of the population, maybe. Those are your yeah, people I that mean, wouldn't do yeah. that. Oh yeah, no. If, I mean, if I, I'm using my own experiences and extrapolating that outwards a bit, right? But like, there. Yeah, no. Like a lot of people, like a lot of people, like when it, when the chips are down, they they will just care about themselves. Like you see that in less serious stuff when it's like. There was an article I read recently. It was it an article? I think it was an article. Uh, maybe it was a YouTube video or something uh, of like a news a news uh, report of someone that left that was going to run for like senator or something or something like a governor or something. But his family got threatened, and then he made a public notice saying, "Well, my family got threatened, and I'm I don't want my kids to get hurt, so I'm choosing to not run because of my family." And that is a small level of like. The God of someone not doing what is ultimately the best thing uh, to protect the themselves good. and their family. But then when it gets, but then the, again, the majority of people, I believe, uh, again, through personal experience, when it comes to the more serious stuff, when it comes to like, hey, like, you got to let us traffic your kids or we're going to kill you. What do you choose? And if we kill you, we're also going to go traffic. Gonna traffic your kids. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> so it's like, you could just be down for it. Like we, we can give you some stuff you want, you know, like to like, I don't know, most, most, I don't know, my family never got, my mom, mom never got anything out of it, but I presume that some people will probably get some benefit out of it. Um, Somebody does. Yeah. And yeah, um, most, yeah, most people are like, I'll totally, yeah, I'll t totally prefer my own safety. Like I could always make more kids or like, you know, as long as I get to watch that new Disney show coming out next week, like uh, fuck, fuck everyone else. Um, and then when I get, yeah. And then it, extra it extrapolates. People, a lot of people will say that like, I'll do whatever I need to do for my kids. Like if, if I need, if, as long as I can keep my kids and keep them safe, I'll traffic your kids. And that's just, people don't fucking care. Like, are they care, but not enough to do anything about it. They don't, and they that's, don't that's, up. Yeah, and that's that's how the system. That's one of the many ways in how the system perpetuates itself is through things like that, and through things like again, like grooming young adults, grooming kids that are victims of trafficking into being traffickers themselves. See, that's one thing that I think is really obvious in the seriousness of this of like human trafficking, et cetera, of uh, government um, compliance um, with this stuff, is that once you think about how the system sustains itself, the money involved, um, the, the, like the, I don't know, there's like the logical conclusions that people would have to come to when speaking about something like this. For me, and if I'm more than happy to have conversations with other people that might be on the fence or might not be, or might be in disbelief of something like this, to try and like lead them towards this path or whatever, or toward this understanding. But like, yeah, like how does how does an industry, a a a global industry, sustain itself from perpetrators? Like, where do all these human traffickers come from? Where do all these victims come from and go? Um, where does the hundred and fifty billion dollar industry, just in the United States, where does that go? Where where does that money go? Is it going into like like homeless people's crack addictions? Probably not. Like. You know, like statistically speaking, $150 billion, there's 320 million people in the United States. Like how many, I, I don't know. Let's just like do some I math. ask all the time. Yeah, like 800, how, how they many? say 800,000 kids go missing in the United States. It's higher than that a year, right? And my question is, where the fuck do they put 800,000 kids? How do we not know where, where are, that's a lot of kids just to be gone. Where the hell are they? You just don't lose that many bodies alive or dead you know like where are these kids yeah eight hundred thousand kids don't go missing they get taken they they forced they're forced into hiding so not i mean not into hiding but they're they're hidden um and then um but where in plain sight 
Yeah, exactly. And, and then you have one word, uh, but then you also have 60 to 90 percent of every child in human trafficking comes from social services. That's not a statistic I made up. Yeah, it's one out of two. Yeah. So it's so no, not not even one out of two. It's, more, it's 60 to 90. So even if you have if it's 50%, it'd be one out of two. Oh, 60, so, yeah. Huh. So you know, 60%, the very lowest statistic, is more than if you send two kids into social services. One is definitely. It, <laughs> yeah. And so that's up to 90%. Wow. That's you're almost guaranteeing wow. every kid. I mean, this is, again, not a statistic I came up with. The vast majority of, of victims in human trafficking come from social services. Um, and then and then I'm not trying to even focus necessarily on social services, but social services is just, a, that? is just a, uh, what's it called? A, like, is just the current- It's just a, an octopus leg on the whole thing. It's just one little tentacle to this whole web. Yeah, yeah exactly. One, one tentacle, one, it's just one function of this thing. And so like you have- you know, like buyers and sellers, you have handlers, you have transporters, you have, and it's not like people aren't given this position, like, oh, I'm a, I have my, my transporter badge, like, it's not, it's very unofficial, very convoluted, but very intertwined, very, like, sophisticated. Um, majority of people that are involved in trafficking are, victims themselves or everyday people in some extent and then you have a huge number of people that are uh the people that are in control of the situation which are law enforcement cps government officials all uh and i'm not saying everyone everyone and politicians are like all politicians are all law enforcement etc but the people that are in control of this stuff the reason why this stuff is so prevalent is because specific people in power within all these agencies all these institutions are the maintainers of the human trafficking, maintainers of the corruption, et cetera. And that's not unique to the United States. It's not unique to this era. It's, it is literally something his, historical that you could go back through hundreds, if not thousands of years of governments around the world of the ones in power, like the, like the, the soldiers, uh, the warriors in, in, let's say like, like Sparta, like Spartans or whatever, like you'd have uh, different groups that would war against each other or that would like, like let's say like political infighting. And then certain things would evolve from that. You can go to like Rome, uh, like during Julius Caesar's time period and there was tons of infighting. Julius Caesar was murdered by other senators or whatever. Um, and so like you have these, uh, these institutions uh, historically that have been put up for a purpose and that these these institutions get corrupted and whether the result is like again something historical with like Julius Caesar or something or something more modern with things that we were dealing with nowadays corruption is something common and prevalent throughout history throughout society throughout uh not again not only our nation but every every nation and something that really that I, I I'm, I'm thinking of I'm trying to think of ways of trying to convey like like, yeah, like people in power, like you don't have to hate and go out, like, you know, murder all these people or anything like that. But like, you shouldn't trust these people. You should actively presume that like, when something systemically bad is happening, that it's maybe not ev everyone there's fault, but it's stemming from that era, from that area um, of like military, government, law enforcement, politicians, those in power, like human trafficking, again, other forms of corruption, it's not stemming from random people on the street. Like, no. no, it's not just some thug or some gangster, you know, or you know what I mean? Like out on the street creating it. No, this comes deep within our government and our church, the churches, not our churches, because I don't go to church, but the church, the government, this stems way deep into everything. Um, because if it didn't, somebody would step up and help and nobody's, yeah, nobody's no, doing I mean, that. there's, there's, I mean, and it's so weird. Like we can, like, I mean, just with my own research preparing for my asylum case, there's, I've mentioned this a little bit uh, on our last uh, bit of talking um, on a local state federal level, there's 
in every state, there's issues within agencies, within law enforcement, within government, within politicians. Uh, there's many, many things regarding FBI and CIA and government officials international. Um, look at other governments and what they've written or other nation, go to other nations uh, and find out what they read or what they understand the U.S. to be as, and that then you'll get a bit more unfiltered uh, version of events uh, of, of a variety of different things. And then even if you were to like not, even if you were to conclude that a portion of what people are getting is like mm, either dramatized or inaccurate or some way, the sheer magnitude of, of criticisms, we'll say, against the United States from both within and outside of the United States, uh, against the United States uh, and, their, and the government officials is overwhelmingly, uh, it's overwhelming and it would have to give, I would think the average person, the notion that the United States government is a corrupt entity, and I'm not. And I'm not trying to pick on the United States uh, uniquely. I, I again, it's, go I ahead. Think it's every, they deserve it. <laughs> I think it's. I think it's most, if not every, government in the world, uh, and that's why most and most governments, even the United States, has laws against corruption, because at least at some point in time, people were aware that corruption was a real thing that people needed to be concerned about. The people are so not so everyone, but some people are so. Oh. I don't want to, I don't like using terms like brainwashed or anything like that, but some people are so coaxed into thinking that like, you know, it's 2022, we have that one guy in office and there's other guy running this other office. And there's no way corruption could happen nowadays. Like, you know, you might get like a guy embezzle money and like, I don't Those know. Those are just like little, fall little guys, there. you know? You yeah, gotta, yeah. But you gotta have like, some like, fall guys, you gotta have some people win their kids so you can hide as many people that are losing their kids and so on yeah. down the line. You know what I mean? Like you have to have some of that just to keep no, the people yeah. thinking that, you know, there's good in the world. This isn't everybody, but it is, it's all of them. It's all the whole government. Like there's, if, if you are not a part of it, you know, it's going on. So you're just as much a part of it. You're just as much to blame. Yeah, no, 100%. Um... Gosh, I mean, yeah, it's just, it's, it's a bit much. One, one thing I don't want to uh, sidetrack too much off of my, uh, uh, right. of my particular story. Is there anything in, into my story that you want to dig into more? I know we talked about like when I first started. So you're, I was watching a video with your brother and he said at the age of 11, you guys were put into foster care around that age. Why, why were you taken from your parent, your mom at that point and then put into the system and why did they come and take you guys? Uh, well, the, uh, one thing I want to clarify, did my brother say that we were taken from our mother? Um, I don't know exactly. I just know that around the age of 11, I think he may have been 11. You might've been a little younger. Um, that is when you guys were put into CPS or CPS took yeah. you guys. Okay. I was just trying to figure out which video you watched. My brother does, his story changes depending on which video you watched of his. Um, but me and my brother were never taken from our mother. Uh, we were taken from our dad. We were living with our mother and my mom went to go sit because of the situation. She sent us to go live with our dad, knowing that we were going to get taken to social services because she wanted to set up my dad to be the bad parent and not her because, you know, she's she has to be looked at as like a good responsible parent. So when her kids are involved in human trafficking and shooting up schools, she could be like, oh, how did this happen? Like, I've just been this really sweet lady this whole time. I've raised my kids the best as I could. But like, ah, sorry, <laughs> I just like blowing my mind away with some of the stuff my mom has done and stuff like that. But no, yeah, we got taken from our dad. Uh, and the story is relative, is, is somewhat convoluted. Um, and I was told a different story than what my brother mentions in his YouTube video. And both of those stories are different than what my mom says in a recording that I have of hers of how we went into group homes, which is also different than another story that my brother told and how we went into group homes. And so somewhere between what I was told, which is probably the least true because I was constantly lied to and something between my brother my, 
uh, my mom's one story and my brother's two different stories. Somewhere around there lies the truth. But we were taken to our dads and then taken away from our dads, or at least I was. And my brother was somewhere else uh, at this person named Drew's house and this stuff happened and yada, yada. But we were taken into social services. The real reason was because my mom didn't want the stress of constantly fucking kids over and fucking her own kids over. And but not like really like the stress of that, but really the stress of the potentially getting legal consequences for, for that stuff. Um, and so she, uh, with the help of Rob Campbell and I presume other people uh, that were involved in, around this time, um, set up my dad as the fall guy, as the bad parent that we would get taken away from. Uh, yeah. They still do that today. The bad parent, good parent scenario that still is happening yeah. to traffic kids. Did you go into a group home from there? Uh, yeah, no, me and my brother, um, went into, uh, CRF group. Home. No, we went into Orangewood and then we got taken from Orangewood to CRF group homes. We got split up immediately. And from basically once I was 11, I never saw my brother after that. Like until when, like, ah, like I saw it, let's see. I remember he visited my mom once in Tustin or whatever city that was, right, like right after I got out of group homes, my brother stayed in group homes. Uh, I saw him once or twice in Huntington Beach, California before I was 18. And then I saw him once after I was 18. And then I saw him for like a month when he lived with this person named Melissa. Uh, and then I left there and then that's when I got picked up by law enforcement and the person that was investigating my human trafficking case was the first person that molested me. Um, so, and also not, no, yeah, I didn't realize at this time that my brother, like only in hindsight, because my brother, I remember my brother had a friend named George. He would ask me, uh, he would come up, like, he'd be like, your, bro your brother's saying this stuff about you. Like, what do you have to say about it? And I was like, like what? And I had no idea what my brother was talking about. But my brother and what a lot of people were doing, not only at this time, but before this and after, was saying that I'm like I'm mentally retarded and I murder people, I rape kids, I am a master computer hacker and I delete all of the criminal evidence off of computers and I'm a danger to people. And depending on, on who they're telling this to, the story would change. Depending on the time frame, the story would change. And so George, my brother's friend, was like, your brother's saying all this stuff about you. And I told, and I remember in front of Melissa's house, I was next to George and my brother in front of Melissa's house and this woman named Shelly's house, like my Melissa's roommate or something. I think her name was Shelly. I was like, Chris, like George is saying, blah, 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 blah. And my brother's saying, no, it's like, I'm not saying any of that. And my George is like, no, you just said all this stuff about him. Tell him what you're, tell him what you told me. And then like, my brother's like, I didn't tell him anything. Shut up, George. And he's like, no, this is really fucking weird. Tell him. And then eventually, uh, my brother told George, like, shut the fuck up, blah, blah, blah. They was gone to a fight. And then I can't remember exactly. I think my brother said that my, my brother told me that he just said that I was stupid and he was mad, mad at me or something. Then, like, he was, we, were, we made up or whatever. Um, but, like, a week after that, or, like, a short, like, a, within a month after that, George got arrested for... Uh, some, I forget, forget what it was exactly, but he has to like live in a home now for like predators. George never did anything wrong to anyone. George is mm -hmm. a good person, one of the few good people. And the reason why that happened to him is because he, he was wondering what the fuck my brother was talking about. And because he was just another random person, he got caught asking the wrong question at the wrong time kind of thing. My brother is a fucking human trafficking piece of shit that fucks kids. Sorry, I'm really angry right now. <sighs> but like, no, my brother's just, sorry, my brother's fucked over so many people. And there's even people on here that like are a part of it. Like I have messages from different people on TikTok of, uh, from people, uh, from some of my followers saying that these people like know me or that like trafficking in this place could have never happened because of X, Y, and Z. Uh, and it's just so bizarre, like the amount of work that people, the amount of like jump, the amount of loops that people have to jump through to be, to pretend that they are not involved in human trafficking when they are literally involved in human, in human trafficking. And I have a stance, I have a personal stance that 
you physically do not have to sexually assault kids. If you're aiding in someone trafficking kids, you molest children. Right. That's just, that's just, you know, like on a, like that's, you're, you're just as complicit as the people you're doing the abuser. Act. You're their abuser yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. What, like, and that's just how I feel. And I just like, I just have like years, years. Like I, I, I was in slavery. I know a person named Michael. I don't remember his last name. That it, that as far as I know, still now he's alive, still in slavery with these people. I know dozens of people, if not hundreds of people that are dead. And that all my brother needs to do with a few of his fucking stupid friends. I'm pointing at my TikTok, not about you guys, but like there's one one follower that my that's one of my brother's friends that is involved in message. Like he's following me right now on here. And he's oh. messaging people that yeah, he's messaging people that I know. Uh, that have messaged me on TikTok. They're like, hey, I got a message from this guy saying that you're a liar and that like, or this other girl saying all this stuff, like, and you show me these messages. And I'm like, oh, okay, I see. Like, yeah, I thought that was happening. And it's the same shit that would happen with tons of other people throughout my life, throughout me be- working in different jobs I've had. I've had my jobs come to come, like, be like, hey, like, uh, I got a call from your mother. I got a call from law enforcement saying that we should protect you even though you have sex with kids. And I'm like, yeah, my, my mom's just a fucking drug addict. And her, that's her, those are her friends. Like ignore, ignore them. Like it's, it's not true. I'd be arrested. I, I don't like, I, I'd have a uh, background on it. And they're like, yeah, no, we did. We do background checks on everyone. You don't have that. It's just a weird thing that would happen, but eventually it would get harassed so much that I would have to leave the job because I would have to, I would either get fired or they're like, Hey, like I have people coming after me now, or like, I'm getting weird shit happening to me. I can't have you work here. It's putting everyone else in danger. I've had that happen tons of times. I've had this so many torture. opportunities. This is like, no, yeah, no. I, it's, is- it, I mean, I've had so many opportunities lost. I've had so many different, I mean, not only my, my elementary school education, my middle school, my high school education, every, every job I've ever had, um, the vast majority of friendships and relationships I've had and have been manipulated by these people. I've had so many people I know that knew what was happening to me, but they're like, like I kind of what I just said, like they're coming after my family now. I literally cannot be your friend anymore because I was like told that if I was your friend anymore, that they're gonna come after me. Um, and all be like it's just fucking so annoying that all some people need is like, like I don't know, like I I I I just I presume that as full-grown adults these people are not so dim-witted anymore and that they have to be there. They have to be aware that they're assisting in this stuff because I was aware once like, you know, that like these people involved in my trafficking after it came out, they, that law enforcement was involved and they were trying to trick me into doing stuff. I'm like calling it out. Like as they were telling me, I'm like, dude, I'm not this dumb guys. Like if you guys want me to do something, I'll do it if I think it's for the benefit of people, but I'm not going to traffic people. If you want to do something that's part of it, your master plan, and it's something that I just think is just beneficial, that is not directly involved in trafficking or something like that, then yeah, like I'll help. Like you guys want to brainstorm something, we'll talk about something. You guys want me to like fuck with someone that's like that you can prove to me is a piece of shit, then yeah, like I'll I'll play along, whatever. Also using that opportunity to get information myself against them. Um, but like I'm just like. There's like full grown adults, like people like within social services, people within like the friend groups, people within law enforcement. These aren't children. They are full grown adults, fully developed brains. They are aware of of being uh, propositioned with things. They're aware of outcomes to things. They're also, most people are aware of statistics, like statistically how likely it is that this person's talking to me out of the kindness of their heart when it's involved X, Y, and Z. And I mean, people can like, like manage this stuff intellectually um can you grab my charger or my computer (laughs) have Um, you ever asked yourself why did you have you ever sat down and asked like why is this why are they always constantly coming at me why why is why why do they do this all the time why me i say is like i mean i said that before but more like less in a literal level i know why literally literally i was chosen because i was picked out so to speak because my mom was involved in it and it's involved it's just cycling it's a cycling through um resources like you have a chicken that lays eggs once it's not good at laying eggs anymore you do what you can with it you make meat out of it or whatever you do whatever 
the industry does, and then you make use of the of the next resource. And I and then so on one reason that's why I was like chosen is because my mom was involved in, in trafficking, et cetera, and she cared more about her modeling career or whatever the fuck she was she was modeling. I don't know what was the initiating thing of when of, in her head where I was like, oh, this is cool, like this is okay. Uh, but you know, she was more caring about whatever part of her life than she was about her kids. Um, so there's that level, but then there's also um, there's also uh, like like you know like I thought because I used to think why like I ask talk to these people I'd be like why like and I'm not talking just like one conversation I'm like dozens of hours of conversation uh, through tons of other stuff. It came out that I don't say it came out, but this is my understanding as well as what I was told is that a lot of the trafficking. Uh, is is used to blackmail people like that's why kids are trafficked in my opinion i do not think the vast majority of people that are trafficked is because of just like people in power have weird fucking interests i don't think that at all i think that's statistically very unlikely that just because you're rich ergo you're a pedo or something like that um the vast majority of people that i was involved with that were involved in actually sexual sexually assaulting children were unwilling participants. They were being forced to against their will uh, so that, because they knew of like, if they didn't, they knew what would happen otherwise. And then if they the did- the majority of them were that way? Yeah, the vast, vast, I mean, I can't, I cannot think of, but two people right now at the top of my head, I'm sure there's maybe a couple more, but at the top of my head, two people come to mind that were like, oh no, they were down, they were just, they liked just, it, yeah. Yeah, they they they're, they liked it. The vast, vast, vast majority, unwilling participants, unhappy to be there, not wanting to be a part of this. They just knew like something was going to happen to them or their family if they didn't involve, if they didn't go along with it. Um, and then, and most of them knew that like this was to keep them quiet about things that they were doing, that they've done, they were doing, that they were going to be asked to do in the future. So, um. um the people that are in charge of all the child trafficking, this is a way to strong arm them and to keep yeah. them in check, basically. Yeah, no, Jack, yeah, for, yeah. It's just, thick brain to come up with that idea. Yeah, no, yeah. Who comes it's up like, with that? <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. It's 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 not something that's unique to you. It's not like people in the United States one day were like, hey, we need a way to do this or something like that. Like this, like ways of operating a nation have existed for thousands of years and things have evolved uh, like, you know, people learn from their mistakes, a, a proficient individual will learn not only from their own mistakes, but learn from the mistakes of others. And right. so you just look at like how nations have risen and fallen. You look at how organizations and industries and groups have risen and fallen. And you look at like, okay, so how do we, like, let's say if like, you and I were to make a country, how do we make a country? We were look at how other countries made a country. How did every other country fall? How do we escape this, this, funnel that many other countries have fallen into and so we work around that uh we try to understand the like individual circumstances that created those events and we try to avoid those and if these things are un if certain aspects of these are unavoidable you try to work them in your favor um it's kind of like counting cards at uh at a casino right. like you can't like you can it's 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 just by, it's by chance if you're like, you know, a, a nation rising and falling, an organization, a business rising, like, you know, staying in power or whatever, it is by chance if you're unintelligent. You know how to manipulate the game if you're intelligent enough, and then you can sustain your position on the playing field or whatever longer if you know how to, if you're intelligent enough, if you know how to manipulate uh the, situ the game for your benefit or for the benefit of your agenda that's like any playing field so when you started coming out um with all this information so you, you were in your did you do this in your 20s after you found out is that when you started this whole process of trying to um tell your story i guess um well was it there was no, is that why you started no, it, this it definitely wasn't like the heel like i've up until 2015, 2016, I was like fine. Like I've, I just had all the stuff that happened to me and I was like all the stuff that I was like trying to uh, like get, I was trying to like get these people into like positions uh, to catch them in, crim in criminal acts, et cetera. But 
I, and, but like, I never, though a lot of bad stuff has happened to me before the, before 2016, 2015, it didn't really affect me in a like personal level. Like in a, it didn't really affect my social ability. It didn't really affect how I would interact with people in very little of any way. Um, but um, yeah, so for the reasoning behind me, like, uh, I want to make sure. Can you answer, ask your question again? I'm sorry. Well, was it, did you start telling your story? Was it to heal? Was it to wake, you know, awareness? Like earlier we talked about, like the awareness was just kind of like a, a bonus to it all. Were you trying to build a case against these people to have um, justice in the courtroom? I'm. Well, re recently, like there's an old, the last like four or five years, I've been hyperactively trying to bring this stuff up. I say for at least the last like, Let's see, it's 2022. I'd say for about five or six years, I've been hyperactively trying to bring this stuff into the light. And then for years before that, I was in between actively to inactively trying to bring this stuff uh, out into like the light, so to speak, like the public light. Uh, but it was never for self-healing or anything like that. It was just more just so... People like, I don't know, like if, if I meet people that are like, Hey, like we're here to make sure things went right in this, in the government, I want to be like, Oh, like here are the things that I've observed don't work right in the government. And that's just kind of like my take is like everyone in the United States or a majority of people uh, are in like society and they have this like opinion of like, we got to have society to work for everyone in society and we got to make sure it's just and reliable and proficient and all these other things and i'm like oh like here's these problems i found in society like here's my you know this this is just this is my evidence this is the stuff that you can look through this is my my take on things you can use this to make society better like you know these these are my opinions or whatever uh, that's really that's that's kind of all it is is like the gist of it is like all the reason why i'm speaking out is just people can't solve a problem unless they're aware of it. Um, right. Awareness. I absolutely am um, right there with you, Kevin. You're absolutely right. Awareness is the first step to lasting effective change. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I mean, awareness, yeah, exactly the first step. And then, um, but the, the, the sad thing is what I, what I say is uh, that I've gotten, which I touched on on our last video, was unfortunately, I don't meet almost anyone nor do i see in, in the public sphere uh or the or social media etc people willing to go beyond uh awareness people are like let's just make people aware and people are waking up whatever the f that means and like and like it's just like people are like that's it like we we did it and it's like no no it, that's no, the like, first step but that's yeah, no, not yes, yeah, yeah. yeah no it, it is the first step like there's like legitimately like this sounds extreme to people who live i feel like i'm not trying to be a dick here but i feel this sounds extreme to people that live mediocre lives if you think that going after people in power within your own government is extreme when the government is corrupt when like your government is corrupt if you believe your government is corrupt it's your duty the, on the only absolutely you it's have. your duty it's your obligation to 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 to, 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 to remedy that and you know in our in our, in our constitution and in our independent declaration of independence it states that if the government is no longer serving the public interest we have the right to take it down with extreme prejudice and build a new one and you know that's yeah, kind of no, what we're seeing now that's where we're at well, yeah that's where we're well, at I mean, even even what you see though a lot of people though though yeah i mean those different sides of it you'll see people walk around that and be like oh no we have that like that's that's the military that's that's the that's what this military is supposed to do or something like that or like no, but they're not but those, look what's happened with how they're the purging everybody that's 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 critical thinking using the vax mandates to do it that's that yeah, we have, yeah, that's yeah. a huge problem right now too yeah well i mean even you get you get so like you have that as an aspect of it but then you have all these different facets of manipulation to i guess maintain the status quo etc yeah but no, like I'm, again like you're absolutely I, right I, go ahead yeah, no, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I think just having a, a, a like really starting groups in a public forum transparently so people can't say like, oh, this is a fringe group trying to blah, blah, blah. It's like, I'm not, I'm not trying to do anything fringe. I'm trying to do everything very loudly open, very mainstream, um, right. which just so happens 
to overthrow a government that not only through my personal experience, and I'm not saying like overthrow the government and have like some communist or I'm not communist or capitalist, but I like just for people that are watching, like I'm we not need trying small, to much smaller local government is what we need, not not big, big government that we're here experiencing now. Cause look, when you have absolute power, it corrupts absolutely. And then all that's what we're seeing, or sort of witnessing on all scales, like to some extent. It only yeah, takes three well, percent. That's all you need. Three percent on your forum. Get three percent of the population to get on a forum that is transparent, that all believe in the same thing, and you'll have change. Yes. You yeah. have accountability to have change, though. So you make them yeah, accountable. Exactly. Account- yeah, account- accountability and and but the one thing too is is just like how do we how do you impose? Let's say like most people say like all we got to do is vote. No. What's the point no, of that's... voting when the laws? <laughs> what's the point of voting when the laws that are being voted into are being broken by the right. laws that are that are proposing them, as well as the laws like the the function, this function of being laws that are being written and laws are being proposed, uh, and then people that are like you know like different voting laws, etc. Like the system in and of itself is corrupt, and this is it again is. not unique to the United States. I personally think most. I'm not. I'm not like. Anarchist, all anarchist, governments yeah. around the world, all big governments, and you know, we're, we're seeing this on a global scale here, especially yeah. in the last couple of years. So you're absolutely I, right. It's not just I, one country here or there. It's all of them. And you know, yeah, and you well, have your elements well, of your, your factions of white hats and factions of black hats. You know, and that's it, that's kind of the reality of the situation yeah. for the most part. But you know, you're right. It's, they're all corrupt to some level, yeah. some if, more if, than if others. Not all the vast majority. I can't say all, but the vast vast majority. I I, I have to prove because like I'm like I again like I, I don't know all, so I just statistically right. Like, well, yeah, I'll, likelihood there has to be one government out there that's right right right, right. you know there's like, always the exception to that rule of course would it be funny if it was putin <laughs> <laughs> that would be, the irony yeah, I mean, there would be a, would be I, would be just phenomenal wouldn't it well i mean he's never been a part of the illuminati they say and da 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 would it just be funny if it turned out to be putin i, that would be I think from a, from a u.s perspective it would be comical but i i i don't i I would say from anyone that's part from my experiences, we're both talking with the FBI and law enforcement and everything about the, a lot of this stuff. Um, I am under the impression that if you're part of the UN, uh, especially if you're a major, uh, if you're a permanent member, you're like, it's it's just uh, all the world's, you know, Shakespeare, uh, all the world's stage. All the world's stage, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like, it's, you know, like these are the main actors in social uh, falsehoods. And, uh, you're absolutely right, though. You're, you're absolutely right, 100% on that. Like, I came to the same conclusion just from the, you know, the, I've been doing research on a lot of these subjects for, for at least since 98, you know, for the last 24 years. And, you know, and then in recent years, it's, I've actually absolutely, this is the conclusion I've also come to that you're right. You know, just like, can we look at, look at Operation Mockingbird with the CIA? What most people don't realize is that's still going on. And we can prove that it was going on at least since 96. We have the document to prove it from the, you know, the, from a, a government website they're you know they're publicly and this is in public domain those, a lot of those operations are probably still going on and probably a hundred thousand more that we don't even know of yep. you know that are being done to us unknowingly you know like that's that shit's crazy but i was told by a very smart wise man that if you get control back over the courts you can get control back over the country so if we can go in and start getting control back over the courtrooms and these judges that have gone rogue because it's in all courthouses it Um, is once you but that's the thing that you can get you know back control of the country yeah how do you do that though that's the question yeah how do you you do that and and then not only how do you implement like an an idea but how do you assure that what you're implementing is infallible like how do you make sure it's a full full plan and that's why i i really bring out like you don't want to build like like, moving law is what moving law? All you have to do is move in law. When you move in law, then I mean, it law is oh, law, you know. Right, but but all it takes is for someone to change the law, and then it becomes a, a, a unjust law. I mean, just like look at or break or break or break the law or, or break the law. Like yeah. Those aren't yeah. laws. Really, those really aren't laws. You know, you got to go back to your constitution. Those, you know, well, laws that's on your heart. You, you know, well, that's, that's the thing. Those, though, you, those are you, all statutes. Those are all yeah, rules well, for the slave. Go ahead, well, that's, Kevin. That's the oh. thing, though. Even, well, let's think that even when you have the constitution, you have people not only through our history and not only through US history, but also modern day times of people that break constitutional law all the time. And oh, so yeah. whether you believe in oh, state yeah. law, constitutional law, or statute, um you like there's going to be people that are going to break those laws. Like making laws is almost irrelevant in the system that we have because you have people that will break them, right? That are the people that are in power. And then you also and then so like 
the, again, the so question is like, how do you implement accountability? Yeah, yeah. And how do you implement a plan um, that is um, invaluable? That is something that like you can say like, okay, so we've weeded out all the, like hypothetically speaking, we've weeded out all of corrupt politicians, all of corrupt law enforcement and all of corrupt, uh, um, you know, people with uh, judges, et cetera. How do we keep it? From these- term limits and, and instead of uh, these career politicians we need to be rotating out the actual people that we the people that's that's what my take is and at least for you know i think that's a good starting point i don't think it's the full solution but it would be a good a good a good a good a direction potentially to start going if we can get it to that point and then from there we have right. to have absolute transparency and the absolute consent of the public of the people on all levels yeah, I, I think a lot of, you know, yeah, I, I think, uh, I think the, I think I, I agree with everything that you said. I agree wholeheartedly with 99.9% of what you said. And I think uh, it's a good add on, but I really, I personally think, because at, at this point, what we're doing is just taking everyone's word at it. Like this news organization's word that this person did something bad, this law enforcement agency's right. word that X, Y, and Z did something bad. We need evidence. Things. We really need we're evidence. Like, we're, we're just taking word, people's word at it. When we like, we have the ability we're like we like everyone owns a cell phone we have the ability to literally throw it thank you i do i've been telling this to people we have the tools at our disposal you know like yeah. everybody's so distracted with these with these with these the movies just this these you know these videos on tiktok and all the other social media platforms that they're just can be completely distracted when we have the tools a lot of this information and a lot of this evidence is public domain i mean and we have the tools at our disposal to do it but nobody wants to just how do you get people to wake up to actually start doing it is that the real key like, that's what we got to start figuring out I don't know. We've been doing it though. <laughs> yeah, well, we've been doing. Again, we've been like, making this, making a somewhat of an impact. But you know, we still need to. We still have a long way to go. Yeah, I, I think again, like I just think the best way to have it. What I was saying is like there should be a law or something that if you're a work for, if you're a government employee, especially if you're a law enforcement judge or a politician, th- from the time you wake up to the time you're done with your your uh, your day of work. You should be under 24 hour public surveillance like YouTube Live yes. or like I, I love that idea. I think that's a great idea. Like, I think I, that would that's a really good 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 concept to go to. I I, I would never even but yeah, right. That's that's a really yeah, good um because that will enforce yeah. accountability. Yeah, yeah, it will enforce accountability because even right now you have law enforcement that is like, oh, law enforcement has cameras, but they can shut them off whenever they want. And not they, only that, like, the first 30 seconds is always too. muted. Yeah, and then not only that, but then you also have, like, let's say you have camera, like, you know, you have video surveillance that you know was taken. You go to the police station, you sign a thing, do you want that stuff? They They're like, it. no, we're not releasing it to you. <laughs> oh, that's like, what the fuck yeah. do you mean? Yeah, where's the accountability with that? You're right. Yeah, and yeah what exactly. about What about what about getting a media motion in some of these Star Chamber courts, and then all they have to do is deny you? How do you get Ex- around that? Exactly. Boy. And so the I've only- I've been Star like, really, Chamber a hundred times. The, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, the, the, really, the only the only way to guarantee, like, otherwise, we're just playing the trust game, which is great, right? If we're like not relying on our lives about this stuff, but right? Like, but we are. We, are this is this are these lives are at stake. That's the thing, though. Exactly. We can't be playing it on just trust alone. We have to have absolute accountability exactly. to, to so, some degree. So we know that we're going to be that this is going to be benefiting the people. Exactly. So, like, I mean, really, like, if I had like the the. If I had the money, I would totally like hire people to go to politicians and law enforcement with like cell phones and be like, here, like you you have to keep this on yourself. And they're not obviously not going to do it right away, but like just to start the social pressure of like, exactly. no, like, at, like you should have to wear one of these around your neck 24 seven. If you're all, if you're a government employee or like, or, you know, while you're on the clock, not when you want to turn it on, not when you want no, to turn it on and at off, all but times. as soon as you're on they the clock, not like you turn it on. They do not all, like to be recorded. Yeah, well, whatever, all, all times I, I can go on YouTube. I can go like USA to YouTube USA and check uh, up on them. And public, the state, publicly, the people should be able to yeah. check up on them too yeah, for I transparency. Like the, state, the state of California or the state of Texas, uh, the specific city, the specific precinct, and have a list of different officers that are on live that are working right now. Even the the clerk, I should be able to hit a button and just. Watch what they're doing. Be like, oh, this person's talking with someone about like a ticket, neat, or something. Mm-hmm. I should just be able to do that. Otherwise, 
the this is not only just for our safety this is for the safety of law enforcement the safety of politicians otherwise we're just taking everyone's word at stuff there's i'm sure there's people with law enforcement that were accused of false crimes that got in trouble to some extent about something that didn't actually happen right um but you're absolutely I mean, Paul, right about that kevin you're absolutely like absolutely right about that i mean you know uh, in, in order for us to, to maintain that accountability and, and, and hold the feet, the fire to their feet, so to speak, we have to be able to be able to check up on them because they're supposed to be our representatives. But what they've done now is they've gone so off the rails. There's they're just covering it up at every turn, trying to cover their ass. I mean, it's gotten so bad. I mean, look, look at your situation. You had to flee to, to get sanctuary in Mexico. And, you know, and then and let me tell you, we got another guy that guy, one of our team members just uh, reached out to me, wants to tell his story, and he's in the same boat. He's fled to Mexico too for sanctuary because of the, how bad it is here in the States. Hmm. That's it. Uh, I was gonna, I, mentioned, I, I remember when you said that, that sort of another person coming to Mexico, I almost want to be like, hey, we should meet up, but like, I don't want to, I don't want right, to intrude right. or bother this person too much. Yeah. But I, I definitely like, there's probably a few things that I might be able to help them with. And they're like, yeah. you know, like and then maybe then they can help me with. I, I don't yeah, know. No, I, I think that would be great, dude. I think that would be per, that would be awesome, dude. I think you really could be able to help each other, you know, because like, um, dude, I'm not. I don't want to reveal too much because I haven't really talked to this guy, and it's not my place yet. And we're we're trying to keep his uh, his, his identity, so he's you know to keep him safe. But um, I think I think that would be a great idea. In fact, um, that would be the start of something that we could really you know, uh, to to call it, to implement to to really uh, make lasting change if we play our cards right on that, you know. Yeah, no, 100%, 100%. And I, I think like, again, like whatever works out uh, for the best for this individual and for myself, whatever, whatever's most conducive to positivity. But yeah, no, it's something that I, I'm not, a, I'm not in opposition by. But I mean, yeah, like there's a lot of things within my personal experiences uh, that I'm sure when it comes to like this overarching situation that could be utilized to some extent for a resolution uh and not even just what's happened to me in my past but there's lots of stuff like i meant that's why i mentioned in the last conversation that we had uh that i think really having an opportunity to sit down and brainstorm not only between like us per se but just people of the public in general uh to brainstorm ideas and to brainstorm solutions and how to act out solutions i think is a massive important uh tool because like you like you were saying and i was saying and we were saying uh awareness is yeah. well is like only part of the plan it's only step one yeah. there's so oh, many um things after that there's so many so what steps yes. do you plan to take to uh start moving in that direction yeah, because like you know, we you know, we've got the awareness thing down. Obviously, you know, we, most people are aware, but we what we really want to try to do with our platform, we do, we're trying to figure out solutions how we can actually put, implement this kind of a change. Because we're just a lot of us are just fed up with this. It's just gone so bad. You know, we want we're we're sick of it. We're, we 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 want change. We need the change, and uh, kind of like that's trying to kind of what we're doing, trying to do with this platform. We have we're just still in our kind of kind of in our infancy. We're still trying to like figure things a few things out here and there, but we're growing. You know, we really we're not about we're we're about presenting the evidence i mean if you haven't checked out some of our previous shows you should um i'll send you some links after the show um let, we've been showing the evidence for a lot of these uh people's that are victims that are going through the cps corp corruption cases stuff you know yeah no 100 percent um i mean and it was asked uh, like what sort of ideas do i have or whatnot um yeah i think just i think just starting with so like gosh really like so def you got to like i guess understand the parameters of the situation so our issue is corruption and it stems from a government level our outreach the goal of people to can to reach out to to uh to remedy the situation is uh general citizenry uh, and the citizen if we're speaking explicitly about the united states we're going to say the citizenry within the united states and so like those are the base parameters we have the issue where it stems from uh, and we have uh, the individuals that um, that are used to utilize resolution. Uh, and so once you have, let's see, so we have those two things. And then, gosh, so we have then have to like think about um, obstacles or like, I guess we have to think about a plan. So like when you right. think of like different modes in which things are, are, made to be successful you have 
uh, like social media, like ver so like verbally, you have uh, like uh, TV, social media are things in which people are uh, given information on different mediums, uh, radio, et cetera, too. And so I would say create an organization. This would be, I guess, my take. I, I would create an organization. Yeah, go, go ahead. We're, we're, we're really, we really want to hear this because you he, he got some really valuable insight. You, you really do. Cool, cool, yeah. So like, I would say like um, the, I would say I would start an organization that at its basis, like legally has to operate at a transparent level. Like I would, if I, I started an organization, I would go to whatever legal entity I would need to, to say that whether I'm in charge or whoever else is ever in charge of this organization, they have to operate under these means. And so that means that like, I would say that like everything that I do, like if I were the leader of an organization, I would say I would have to be under near 24 hour surveillance so that people know that I'm not doing anything corrupt and that right. all the paperwork that I am, let's say like people that I'm meeting with business wise, all my finances, et cetera, all of that, I would make legally obligated to be uh, public information through those means, through not only yeah. yourself, completely transparent. I love know, that idea, you know, because yeah. that would show at the core what we stand what stands for what 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 what, what it's supposed to be, what we're what's being trying to call them what you know it, it would be i mean because when you stand in your truth you know and you 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 know the truth always comes to light well from an outward perspective and getting again, what i was saying with like law enforcement and everything else so like when you have an organization an entity that works within secrecy it's very easy to lie about that group and so one of the one of the stepping stones is so like not only like to start an idea to, to resolve the issues within the United States, you can't just say like, I'm a good person. I know I'm a good person. I'm going to start a good organization and we're going to change things. It's it's from an outside, from an inside perspective, you're right. But from outside perspective, there's problems. And so yes, instance, they're absolutely you mitigate, right. you got to mitigate the first issue that people are going to see when stepping into this. They're going to see, well, how do we know that you're a trustworthy source? Right. So mitigate, mitigate that issue. So let's say we're completely transparent we are like our, whatever our organization is whatever whatever it is we do we're completely transparent all our stuff is not only like on video and audio and documents that people can look up whenever they want it's not something they have to request from us it's something that is just out in the open whatever public uh, domain yeah public domain it's just there for everyone to look at bam we're so we're a we're a honest source and then from there then we can start proposing an actual solution let's say we have uh the solution like the camera whatever to whatever extent we can work on on um details uh of what this would look like of what this would look like but let's say one solution is to have everyone every politician and law enforcement forcefully wear a camera that they would have to keep on while they're working they can't they don't have the option to turn it off um that would be the potential solution and then we have how do we have the means to interact with the general public we could start social media something like a facebook tiktok youtube thing where it's like where it's not yeah google where it's like it's not for well, any no, she's, like, no, she was referring to our platform we're building trugal yeah, trugal <laughs> yeah i know i like i took the name um but uh so like you have like let's say you you like you know you're so you're what your goal is is to convey information a good way to do that is through social media video audio uh documents etc and so uh one good thing to do is you can then create like a yeah like a TikTok, Facebook, whatever, a centralized website, to where people would go on and use similar to TikTok or whatever the, whatever they want. But a uh, back resource for the people that created that uh, could be for people like you and I or whatever the organization to put out information uh, to reach out to these. Uh, to people, to the masses, through me. Oh, dude, like you're, you're you you're brilliant, dude. You know, you're you're speaking <laughs> on my same web, same wavelength that I'm on, and you know, it's just like you're, you're thinking of stuff that I never even could have. You know, I, I like I've been trying to rack my, my head. How are we going to solve this problem? How do we get out of this situation? You know, dude, it's like I, I would love to sit down with you one of these days when you have time, you, me, and, and Dottie, and because I actually do legal paperwork on the side, and I would like to kind of come up with a draft uh, of some some of these concepts and kind of get some started. No. Yeah, no, I, I'd be, I, I like, I, this is the kind of stuff I used to do with the FBI. Like, we would just brainstorm stuff and I'd give them like general loose ideas of things. And then we'd be like, we kind of like beat it down to more finite things. But this is just, this is literally like what I've done with the FBI as an adult. Um, and so, like, uh, I've had a lot of head damage, a lot of other stuff that happened. So I'm not as proficient as I used to be, but 
That's all right. Um, so like you have, so you're clearly you brilliant have, with your, with, with your, with, with the ideas that you got. It's like, I don't think any yeah, of us on the team have to yeah, come so up with anything things, similar. So, so you got definitely sure got some value the there. Yeah. Th sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, but uh, so like, I'm just trying to get the premise here. So we have the, um, we have us that since we are, or we have an organization that we made that is uh, legally obligated to be out in the open. Everything's public, public information or whatever, uh, open source or uh, however you want to say it, uh, we have the a potential solution or we can add more solutions. We can take away solutions to it, whatever. We have a solution, theoretically. We have to have the means of communicating to the public. Uh, once we have the means to, of communicating to the public, we can use this, something like a Facebook, YouTube, Twitter culmination. And then at the same time, we can obligate that as well to maintain the the idea that we're open and honest to make that everything like you know all the legal paperwork we do all the business dealings right. we do all that's also open from all angles open. too oh yeah yeah all angles exactly and then so now we have the see so we have the people understand us to be truthful and honest people we have a potential solution and we have the communication to the two individuals and then through those means then we have the the basis to brainstorm and to honestly have conversations around the idea of implementing these either the solution that we have or other solutions in the future and so that way if something happens if like i'm leading a thing and then like I get arrested and people are like, oh, like he was caught doing these bad things last year. And like, no, no, he wasn't. Like we have, we literally, his entire we life. Proof to, to, we have proof here, right here. Yeah, yeah no, exactly. his entire life is literally in public domain. Like we have all that stuff up. And so it, it mitigates uh, corruption from an outside source, as well as not only making your organization open, it mitigates. It absolutely uh, does mitigate it. You're absolutely so, like, right. right. On an individual, yeah, on an individual level, if I'm being monitored 24-7, someone can't come up to me and be like, hey, do this or you're going to be black or, you know, X, Y, and Z is going to happen to you. You're just like, no room oh, for, uh, for blackmail either because of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, yeah, no no room for it. No room for blackmail, no room for bribery because money, you know, all your money is being watched or whatever. Um, and then you basically implement what you've been doing to yourself as an organization and you try and push that towards the public sphere. And then once you push, start putting that towards the public sphere, you start working with more de detailed things like specific politicians, specific uh, individuals like citizenry. And so then you can coax, let's say like you have like a group of people, uh, like how you say this. So like you organize people into groups, right? Let's say not only with your uh, enemies or so to speak, like let's say, mm -hmm. I'm not saying enemies, but like there are people- Potential that adversaries or potential yeah, people potential, that yeah. might not have your best interest to hurt. Yeah. Let's say adversaries. So you have your adversaries and then you have your allies, so to speak. And then so you want to organize them into different groups. Like, um, how do you say, like, uh, gosh, there's a term used for it in politics when blocks. You want to organize them into, into like almost like you would voting blocks. Um, you would organize them into certain, into like these people have these skills, these people have, have this knowledge, et cetera. And then use that and then focus like certain tasks to those groups of people as well as the same thing towards your adversaries you want to uh, start targeting your adversaries with certain like i don't say like propaganda but like certain acts whether it be propaganda whether it be honest interaction whether it be manipulation you want to target these people through those means because your goal is your agenda and so you want to get to your agenda was it so like you want to get to your goal mm -hmm. uh under almost like, you know, any means necessary, excluding trafficking kids or whatever these people are doing. And so like you, you, uh, you want, like, I, I'm not, like, I'm not above, like, I personally wouldn't be above on the public, on the public sphere, uh, uh, being above the idea of manipulating people to get what I want. If what I want is for the benefit of of everyone in, in the large, in like, you know, like if I were to say like the benefit for everyone in the system is that everyone knows is that everyone in the system that is in a position of power be recorded, I'm going to manipulate the people that are my adversaries uh, to get them in a position that I want them to be on, that, want, that I want them to be in so that I can get what I, what, what my purpose is for being here. It's like if I'm playing chess with someone, I might move a piece in a way that might seem irrelevant or might put me in a problematic position, but then they're going to move that piece. And then two, three steps down the line, I have this 
planned out where I'm going to move here and get you and check me. And so that's the same like general concept. I'm speaking really poorly. I'm sorry, but this is a general. No, you're concept. fine. You're, you're actually speaking exactly on our same wave. Like we get everything you're saying. It makes perfect sense to me and Donnie. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And so like every, everything. Yeah. And so like, uh, you just get these people in the positions that you want, whether again, adversary or ally, uh, you organize people into groups, uh, and then you yourself are in a position to where you can't be put down because you already have all your stuff open. Like you already, you know, and so you, you kind of set yourself up as the position to start the, the solution. And then there's other things that which you can do. Like I, I do advocate for, um, like I would say constitutionally legal mil militia groups. Like I do advocate for, and I also advocate for less serious stuff. I advocate for di diplomatic missions. I, have, I advocate for uh, humanitarian, like social interactions, et cetera. Like just very non-intensive non things. But I've 100%, I'm not under the, the thought process that you can have a revolution by like hugs, flowers, and high fives. Like, you're just, <laughs> right, that's just not realistic. You're absolutely yeah, exactly, right about yeah. that. <laughs> like, I mean, the, like the French Revolution is is something that I think people can take uh, notice from. And there's not just the French Revolution. There's South Sudan separated from Sudan, uh, or I'm sorry, was it South Sudan separated, or was it the other way around? Whatever, Sudan separated in two different countries. There, so there was a revolution. There's an event that happened there. You can take that as an educational tool to understand a certain element of, of what happened within that scenario and implement that within your own scenario. And same thing, not only with every, with every revolution, but every attentive separatist movement uh, going on within the world, within the United States and everywhere else. Um, these are means in which you can use to push yourself in some level, like every interaction you have, every bad and good thing that government does or that individuals do, et cetera, is opportunity to use these, to use these situations as tools to further uh, any agenda, really like any agenda. And so really it's, it's the person that capitalizes off these things uh, for their, like the first person to really, the early bird gets the worm, is the first person that gets these things that will get their agenda like down the path and so like you you like we got to understand that like i have an agenda my agenda among other things is to end corruption national like i'm sorry internationally uh because i i think it's all intertwined i think I, that's I, ours I, as well believe yeah. it or not that is ours as well yeah and so like and so with that agenda with like i said like that's my agenda i'm aware that other people have other agendas and other people are going to throw me under the bus for whatever their agenda is. I think, and my opinion is most people's agendas are fucking useless. And so like, I, and there's other things that I can't agree with. If there's parts of, and this is the one thing that's really important too. If there's someone that say like your end goal was with another organization or so to speak group is like, or is different. Like you guys have, you guys are both right here. And you're like, okay, this other organization, they want to end here, but you want to end over here. But your next step is this thing. And their next step is the same thing. You guys can help each other either knowingly or unknowingly, unmanipulatively or manipulatively assisting each other to that next step. So then you guys can either, like you guys are knowingly or unknowingly are going to separate after that. But you can use these things. Like I said, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And that's yes. beneficial. Um, use other people, other people's will, other people's agendas and plans, intellectualisms, et cetera, against uh not sorry against them, sorry, but again, uh, but to perpetuate yourself. Um, oh, you're absolutely right. No, like I, I'm right there with you. That's that's brilliant. Continue. Yeah, no, yeah, no. I mean, that's that's the gist of it. That's really the gist of it. Uh, everyone commenting on my live, I'll get to your comments in a little bit. I'm sorry. I just, yeah, I, I don't answer comments when I'm doing live uh, interviews. Uh, or not very often, um, but yeah, no, that's kind of, that's like the gist of it. I I kind of rambled on there for a minute, but um, no, no, you're you're fine. You 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 dude, you're you're a logistical genius. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I appreciate I appreciate that. Thank you. No, and there's a lot more that I I mean, like once we get, I get one thing that again I used to do with the FBI is talk about this stuff, like planning stuff out, and like one thing I'm really good at is once I understand the full parameters of a situation, like I'm giving like these are the things that you need to think about. Excuse me when it comes to like, we wanted this goal done, these are the obstacles or these are the parameters. I'd be like, okay, like this is, 
this is how we're going to get to to here. Um, when it comes to like this situation, uh, like any corruption or whatever, and using citizens using a, as the tool to as resolution, there's so many um, stepping stones. Uh, there's so many variables, and then each each situation has so many variables within itself. And so you're not implementing a plan; you're implementing dozens of plans. Um, and some contingencies. Are, yeah, yeah, contingency plans. Some are 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 competing with each other um, because you know you're you're in reality you have a, you have time sensitive things. You have things that are only opportunistic within certain. Uh, scenarios and Another so you point. have to yeah you have to implement certain things at the same time some things might might destroy each other and so when opportunity when you come to that crossroads you have to choose one or the other and then like there's just so many different things to to think about but i do believe uh that through enough planning uh that there there is a pathway but it's not going to involve someone like it's not going to involve the government taking down the government. It's not going to involve like, and, and this is not just again for the United States, it's for every government. It's not going to involve like revolutions not not going to happen with, within itself. Uh, and it's not going to happen within like, you know, I, I think processing has its uh, utility. I think it's beneficial, but I, it's not going to happen just from people protesting like, oh, like all they need to see is just my, my, my daughter cry and then their hearts are going to be touched. That's, these people don't fucking give a shit. No, they you don't. Know? You're right. They don't. Um, and like you know, like pro, like I mean, so protesting is a stepping stone towards more serious acts that I do think need to take place. Um, I'm not. I'm. I. I can't speak of some of the things that I would advocate for uh, because they are very serious. But I am not under. I am. I'm not above what every other government does on the entire planet throughout all of human history, uh, what they have done to get what they, to, you know, be successful in their agenda. I'm not above that. I, I'm more than happy to involve myself in most, most, uh, almost everything that large governments are, are involved into. Like, I would say really like just not involving children. This is, is like my, is like my line, but vastly yeah. everything Everybody's else lying. i think that's i think that's yeah. most people's line that's not Surpri i mean no, surprisingly be. not no, well, no, surprisingly it should right. be but it should you know be. it's not 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 quite but i mean you know but you it's at least as far as uh people like us go you know that's that is crossing a line yeah no and, and i i just think that like you gotta be like you know you gotta understand that espionage you gotta understand that uh, uh bribery and, and blackmail uh to get people to be blackmailed these are things like these are things that people are going to have to do onto the onto government employees onto military etc because like you're we're not playing a video game we're not this isn't like this is real life yeah yeah this is like this like you know that there's trillions of dollars many many contingency plans involved in maintaining the status quo and i i'm more than happy to maintain certain aspects of of society like i don't want like to overthrow the government and have like anarchy or communism or even i don't i'm not, I'm not cap, capitalist communist or anarchist or whatever but that's not my my agenda my agenda isn't e economy my agenda is is you can't even start to say which which system is is beneficial or unbeneficial until you remove corruption the corruptive element out of it because capitalism could be the best system we don't know the system's corrupt communism mm -hmm. could be the best system we don't know the system's corrupt we don't right. know if right. the democrats are liars the system's corrupt we don't know if the republicans are liars the system's fucking corrupt and so really the only thing that we can do about it is to is to implement a system that is is infeasible and uh, almost impossible to be corrupted and then to implement that plan people have to understand that people that are into billion trillion dollar industries 150 billion dollars just for human trafficking uh, are not going to just be like oh like they came up with a good plan let's just sh sh like shovel them in no you're gonna have to blackmail some of these people you're gonna have to bribe some of these people some of these people are gonna have to go missing like that's just fucking the truth like I know, like crazy. <laughs> like I know it's it sounds grim, but really, like I'm glad that some people, like people who might see this, they're like, 
oh, that sounds really dark. This guy's like talks like uh, too extreme or something like that. It's it's extreme for all the stuff to be happening and for people to be complacent and sit on their asses and to never do anything about it. Uh, it, it. It is normal. It is normal to be in my like to be in my position. Like I I am at war. You like I mean people watching this, you know, whatever random person watching this might think that like, oh no, like this is great. Like I'm having the time of my life. I'm not at war. What are you talking about? Good for you. I'm at war. I know, like, I know of trafficking. I know of, of stuff that have happened. I know of not just trafficking, but assassinations at like I have murders of people. And like, I'm not going to wait for the government to maybe one day turn good. Yeah. Like, I like, you know, because that's not going to happen on its own. No, like, there are the friend- people at war. I'm at war for sure. Yeah. I'm fighting. <laughs> yeah. 100, no, 100%. I mean, like, the French, again, the French Revolution. King Louis the seventh or whatever was it the seventh or fourteenth or whatever I can't remember but King Louis whatever the hell number he didn't chop his own, he didn't chop his his own head off that happened to him right so like <laughs> like you get like these like revolution doesn't take place change real change if we can throw the revolution word away change doesn't take place unless you act it out like unless you act out what you want from the system and from the world. So what can people expect from you next? Um, and my well, now that oh, you've go got your it, story out, you've got your story out. I and I've I've been looking into it. I think you've made some great headway here. Like you really have gotten your story out there. I think a lot of people have by now have heard of your story. What can they expect next? Um, well, here on the 11th, I have my court date, which I may or may not acquire my asylum. If I am successful or unsuccessful, uh, Mexico is a um, like ladder. Like it's a, it's just, it's gonna, it's gonna evolve into something else. Like my, my, I'm not staying in Mexico. Uh, it's a benefit for me to get asylum as it aids in various other things. But regardless, I'm going to move on to other places as I'm aware of the issues that Mexico has with it, not only its own corruption, but its right. own corruption and, com- and compliance with the United States, uh, like many countries have, uh, but also the issue of, of proximity. I've already have, have had people with the U.S. government, uh, with U.S. military background, at my place where I used to live here in Mexico at my old apartment. Um, I have that video up. Um, and so like, uh, again, my, my next goal is to move to a new country, regardless, you know, regardless if I get asylum or not, it's to, uh, it's to seek asylum to another country. And it's just, it's to play, it's, I'm playing the long game for something for my end goal being something that I've kind of touched on in other videos and other conversations, but in a sense, I'm going to say that like my own goals to start like my, 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 my goals to start my own organization, so to speak, uh, that imposes its will, uh, diplomatically and militaristically on governments around the world. Like, I love that concept, dude. <laughs> that you're, you're brilliant, dude. I love it. I think that, I think you're absolutely right about all of that. I absolutely do. No, thank you. I mean, those, I, I, pre- I, I appreciate the positivity. I think it's something, I mean, if anyone has anything serious that they want to do, like anything really serious, they have to realize that the system, whether it's democratic or public, whether it's legal or, or law enforcement or judicial or whatever, it's, 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 it's people uh, scratching each other's backs. And the only way that you're going to make change, real effective change, is by acting out some pretty serious stuff. And it doesn't necessarily mean like, I'm not saying like blow up a building or something stupid right. like that. Like, but like- There is gonna be some, 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 uh, some, 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 some stuff that needs to be done that might not be too comfortable for most people, you know? But you know, yeah, right? exactly. but logistically speaking, that's gonna be a necessary thing. Exactly, yeah, logistically speaking, it's gonna be, it's like saying like, oh, I wanna have a, a, a big worldwide business, but I don't wanna ship anything anywhere because I don't want to be involved in like, you know, the, like I just think from outside perspective, I don't think this, but like, let's say if you're like, I don't want to be involved in helping oil companies make money. And so I want to make a business, but I don't want to deal with anything that involves, uh, you know, gas being used, even though I want an international business. It's just, un- you're, you're, it's just not possible 
at this stage, at this stage to get to do that with, uh, to get your agenda accomplished without right. sacrificing some um, of your, uh, not moral compass, but like uh, preferences, I guess, right. and, and, how, and what you would do with, with certain things. Uh, in order to yeah, get no, to that point, you have to you do, take the steps to, to to be able to get to that point first. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to logistically make it happen, like you're saying. Exactly. No, exactly. 100%. You're not going to be able to make it happen unless you act out certain things, unless you really, I mean, that's just, I mean, it's, gosh, it's just the nature of the situation. Like people want to say like, for, I'm, I'm not sure if, if uh, I met, I don't I met, I don't mention things necessarily that I believe in or that I, I that I do or don't believe in. I'm, so what I'm about to say, I'm not going to say if I believe in this here or not. But like many people mention, uh, like land back for Native Americans, like the treaty rights. Does anyone actually think, either Native American or non-Native American, actually think that the United States is ever going to willingly give Native Americans their right? Land Realistically, no. Realistically, yeah, no. Tr- yeah, even even with the thing that we hold on treaty, that's like, oh no, like they they own <sighs> this land. It's it's unrealistic that the people that these people are just going to like just give it away. Mm-hmm. And so like the idea that you just need to like protest, make people aware, uh, show the government that you're not going to back down off of this idea, that's just fucking childish. Like, yeah, it is. You're absolutely right. It's like, and it's not realistic either. Yeah, no, these people fucking die to try and keep their their lands and to be able to get what treaty that they did, and the loss that they that they suffered from losing their lands and and everything is is something that was perpetually done to them after the fact, after the treaties were signed, and they were put in a position to where they couldn't fight back anymore right. on a strategic level, at least for that point in time. I think now Native Americans and very different people within the United States and outward of the United States have the potentiality of not only taking their land back, but taking land back from individual from ethnic groups around the world that don't have their own sovereignty just in india alone there's 2000 ethnic groups over 2000 that are completely underrepresented or non-represented oh, by wow. their government i you had have, no idea yeah you have separatist movements in almost every country of ethnic groups or groups of people that are trying to create their own nation that is the tool that if I was if I was working with specific, exclusively around like the Native American goal of land back, I would work with every single separatist movement around the world, every group around the world, and uh, that is trying for their own sovereignty and just say like we as let's say the Navajo Nation recognize um, the Kurds in I think it's in Afghanistan. Shoot, I forget. I'm sorry. If, sorry if I'm getting that wrong, but yeah, if, I, I rec- we recognize the Navajo Nation, the separatist movement as uh, of the Kurds trying to start their own government as their own government. We are officially recognizing you as their own government. The Kurds should recognize Navajo Nation as their own government, and all these people can can start like an opposite UN, so to speak, of where oh, it might not. Oh, that's it, brilliant. It, yeah, it, it might not work as if, as effectively as like United Nations, uh, U.S., Russia, whatever. Uh, but it would still be more beneficial that like it would bring back a lot more balance yeah it would bring more balance on an official level like the navajo nation on some level is considering themselves and if officially a separatist nation and then they're trying and then the kurds as well as and this is just not there's again 2000 ethnic groups in india all over everywhere there's the i I think it's the ainu in japan is is the indigenous group within japan um and there's so many different groups that people can work with that these groups within themselves can okay. give themselves more power just by recognizing each other uh, and, the, and, and acting as if and acting as if uh, they are their own separate nations, et cetera. What would you say would be the separatist group here in the States, in your opinion? Just, just ask, because I'm, I'm, I'm curious about that. No, I'm sorry, what was that last part? Oh, you know, you're fine. Um, what would you say the separatist movement uh, group in, in the United States would be, in your opinion? I'm curious. Well, I mean, there's, I mean, for, I would say there's, there's a few that I've, that I have recognized over the years. There's uh, many different Native, uh, Native American First Nation groups. If we're talking about North America, Canada's First Nation, uh, U.S. Is, is Native American. Uh, so you have Native American groups, 
ver a variety of them. You have even groups that are trying to, uh, like you have African American, African American groups, not all African Americans, obviously, but different groups of African Americans that are trying to start uh, separate from the United States within like maybe like the South or something like that. Uh, you have tons of different groups that are trying to uh, uh, create their own nations within the United States, uh, some of which are at odds with each other, but many of which aren't. Um, and again, some of that is within yeah, different African American groups, different Native American groups, uh, your, uh, European descendant groups, et cetera, are also involved in it. Sometimes mixed groups are involved uh, with this stuff. I focus on, uh, what I think is important to focus on, I think is uh, ethnic groups. And so you have ethnic groups historically throughout history, throughout the world that have been disenfranchised. And I think giving these individuals, for, this is the case. So personally, I think that, yeah, <laughs> now we're showing my, my own politics, I guess, with that, with that thing mm -hmm. I was saying. So yeah, I would say that I think it's beneficial for uh, Native Americans, et cetera, would be like- I'm in agreement with you about the disenfranchised people though, giving them yeah. their power back. I'm in complete agreement with you on that though. Yeah, exa exactly. And, and one thing I think is important too is Native Americans need to stop re for, like referring to the everyone in, in the United States as Native American. Growing up, I had no idea there was the Choctaw, Cherokee, Navajo, and then there's even a lot of words for these that are just the American or the English words for these stuff. There's the Native American words for this stuff. Just say what it is and that way... Right. Like, and it's, hey. I mean, it's easy for it's easy for me to say on this on, on one side right. because of my... Like I wasn't, it wasn't illegal to mention a lot of this stuff until like the seventies, it was illegal to practice their own religions, et cetera. But like backing down from this stuff only gives them more leverage. It, it does, so, it does. So, so people yeah. have to be able to, I think people have to, you're right, you're right. I think people, those, those groups have to be able to be able to retain their 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 identity, their cultural identity and their heritage, you know, by doing so, by, 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 by what you just mentioned. You know, I think that's important because it gives them a sense of self-empowerment back, I believe. I think yeah. a lot of Americans yeah. lack um, that kind of culture. Like, what culture do we really have? Right. It's. Well, I don't think you know, we like, really have one that's uniquely our own, except for a, a hog, you know, a, a compilation of a bunch of different ones. Really. I mean, I don't know. I mean, just that's just my my thought on it. But that, that you're absolutely right, though. I think people need to be given their cultural identity back, and and you know, to be able to re regain their, you know, take their their self empowerment back, and really, really keep long lasting effective change. I think you're absolutely right on that. Um, and yeah, no, what would end just... all this child trafficking? All this stuff would potentially just put an end to that. Yeah, no, I, so, I think I mean it's all it's really all intertwined. Yeah, I mean a lot of it's intertwined. A lot of it's tied together. Like when right. we talk about like human trafficking or child or uh, things within social services, etc. Uh, we can go back historically, and not only probably within uh, uh, European descended people, but I mean there's. Um, was it called the native boarding schools, the indigenous boarding schools within mm -hmm. Canada and, and the United States? Many That's children correct. went missing from that. Many, many, mm -hmm. I think it's like 10,000 children have been found in mass graves. Um, they're like, the, that's only like United part States. of those schools that they've dug up. Like that's just like one little section. That's, that's like, just a yeah, fraction yeah. of the actual it's numbers. So sad. Sure. That is terrible. Yeah, it, it is. yeah exactly. And then, and then like, we got to like, like, I, I know assassinations have occurred throughout history. I know blackmailing and bribery have occurred throughout history. I'm pretty sure human, uh, child trafficking has probably occurred throughout history as a tool for blackmail. And probably, again, some people just, like, I think it's the vast minority, um, not to benefit, not to shed a good light on it or anything like that, not that I think it is a good light, but just for context, I think the vast, the vast minority are... Um, like doing it because they enjoy it. But the, I do think historically human trafficking has been around oh, long God. before oh, yeah. 20, 2020. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um and so yeah, I don't know. It's 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 a lot of it's intertwined. A lot of it again, I think from my experience, a lot of the uh my trafficking was involved around blackmailing people. And I think that's what the majority of a lot of this stuff is used for is for blackmailing people and you get people in positions of power that you're that are willing to do things whether it's on a, a micro scale or a macro scale mm -hmm. uh, that are horrific uh, but it gets an agenda done it gets it gets the goal accomplished um, and then that individual to the agenda to the goal you can throw that person away whether they get in trouble or 
they just die of old age or something or just something uh, bad or good or whatever. It's irrelevant. You have an agenda. You have a goal. You can push forward whatever. Uh, as long as you know the the contents of your agenda are being made are being pushed forward, that's the that's the goal. Absolutely, that's the benefit. No, you're absolutely right. And, you know, just uh, man, we had a that, what a what a powerful show, dude. You got so yeah. much so much insight. Uh, I, I know, and, uh, you know, man, thank you for coming on, dude. This has been a great interview. I think we'd love to have you again. Uh, and another time, you know, with the follow-ups with you for, for sure, definitely. Yeah, please do yeah, message me whenever you want. Um, I want to see free. your steps moving forward to this. Yeah, me too. I really, honestly, I've been having like the worst sleep. I've been waking up in like sweats and like uh, just, just stress will do that to you, man. Stress like, will do that to you. Panic attacks throughout the day and like. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, it, it is. Speaking to the it choir. Is, <laughs> it is what. I think we're no, all I, going I, through I, that I to know, some yeah, degree. I, I, yeah, I know. Hearing your story, uh, Dottie, is is also is just it's hard because like uh, I I there's things that I'm like oh like I can relate to aspects of it as uh, a little bit on both sides, but a little bit more I think on uh, you said your daughter's side. Yeah, so I, I feel like I'm like oh I, I've been through that. I've been like oh I've 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 experienced this, um, and so like yeah no it's it's hard it's there's a part of me that just wants to like shut down. And this is like why, why I understand why people like my brother or other people are involved in trafficking because after a while, it just like, you see that like a people really don't fucking care, or at least not enough to do anything about it. Uh, B like, it's just, ex it's exhausting. It's, it's, I don't mean exhausting. Like you ran like, you know, a mile. You know? No, it's, it's exhausting physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically. Yeah. I mean, like you're, I mean, you have nothing left to give and you're still being drained. And um, and then you're so, fighting I mean, like, on top of it. You know, if you choose to fight, a lot of people sit down and they don't choose to fight. I've chose to fight. So my route's been a little bit harder than just sitting down and taking it, you know. Yeah. Um, no, and sitting down and taking it is hard too, but no, 100% fighting is, is an added hard route. You work. know, when you, you know, when they say that um, when you know the truth and you stand in your truth, it doesn't matter if you stand alone. You know, as long as you stand, well, it's hard standing alone. <laughs> it <laughs> is. I mean, just just and just from covering this issue, you know, just the you know, and I, I've not, I've not been, you know, had any, you know, the, the, the experience that to the degree that you, Dottie, or I mean, I'm just covering this, you know, like, and, but this has just been such powerful and insightful to uh, just be able to cover all these stories, you know, because it really does. It just gives me a small fraction of, it, of what you guys must be going through, and it, and what I'm going through is here is hard enough, you know, just to have to to hear it like every day. You know, it's, I can only imagine yeah. what what you guys must have had to deal with and you know what you guys are going through and the fact that you're still persevering and doing your thing i just got to give you guys a lot of credit it's just there's a I lot know, of courage here i know kevin and i i know he is too we go through trauma like it's trauma it's traumatic every day you know because none of it's ended you know the child trafficking is still going on they're still taking kids they're still taking kids so like this battle is still going on for me i still haven't seen my daughter it's been a year so my trauma is on a, as soon as my eyes open you know, it's like, how's my daughter doing today? What is she doing? How, how is she feeling? What, what are they doing to her? You know, where did she sleep last night? Um, did she get dinner last night? You know, like the 10 months, I didn't know where she was though. Like, how do you sleep? I mean, I have terrible nights of sleep. Like my sleep habit is like completely thrown off and crap. You know, basically my quality of life has become shit. You know, I, it's yeah. really hard to have goals and to look, you know, forward to something and um, plan anything. You, my focus has been nothing but this case, the, the kids that are being trafficked and taken out the 21st circuit district of uh, St. Louis County. Got to take them down, take them oh, down the rest Dottie. of the country to go down. You know, yeah, we got, okay. we have colluding videos of 40 GALs, um, guardian items on a phone call colluding together um, with the presiding judge over, um, who fled um, St. Louis County when all this took place. So, I mean, there's a lot of am ammunition there. It's just knowing how to use it. You know, yep. that's been a problem. That's key. Yeah, because we have all this ammunition, but like I said, all the attorneys are involved. So nobody will step up and help anybody. So, you know, and then people yeah, are I, so involved with their own case that they don't know how to come together and work mm -hmm. together as a team on a, a goal 
that will benefit everybody because it's your kids. So you get the blinders on. You're like the horse, you know, you just put the blinders on. You go, go, go. When, you know, sometimes you need to stop, take a break, take a breath and get with other other people. Come in this, you know, to the circle and have some ideas and start working, you know, together collectively. But that's been really hard. I've been trying to collect people up for a year collectively to do a like a class action lawsuit or to do anything. And, you know, I have not been very successful at collecting up people, even though after um, I released the audio to my daughter in court that day and we stood up, 100, of fam- 100 families came forward or so right away, had stories. We did a press conference. They stood out in front of the courthouse. They told their stories, but nothing went from there. So how do you get people to come together? Right. You know, it that's part of the problem. How do you get 3% of the people to come to your, your platform to implement this idea that you have? How do you gather them? It's really hard. I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, it is. Yeah, on a grassroots level with people that are disenfranchised and have very little, like, I mean, I have very little. I don't know what you all have. But I have very little. It's very hard for me We're to, like, pretty much all in the same boat, uh, I think. Yeah. I mean, like, it, it's when if you have, a, I mean, like, I mean, just trafficking alone in a $150 billion industry, you have other people that are just, that are, have legal money, let alone illegal money. They can, and you know, it's crazy. Buy- the, um, um, the, court system makes you know the losses you know lawyers and all that the legal um industry makes 50 billion a year yeah so you take 50 billion plus your 150 you're looking at two, that's a 200 billion dollar industry that's how much how much is on each kid's head that's right. that's the cost that's you know they have they have put war on these babies heads they have money on their head yeah absolutely but, right even, even even in a even in a, in a legal context you have uh, children within social services, you pay, like especially babies, you pay tens of thousands of dollars for children uh, to it's adopt it's them, and that's like that's huge incentives for for people to commit a crime. It's huge, right. you know, like it's not, and it's not people are like, well, it's not like the law enforcement officer or the social worker got the ten thousand dollars. No, there's a lot well, more. Cool they got kicked back at some point. Something trickled down. Yeah, exactly. They get right. shit. <laughs> they get shit. But there's a lot of the stuff makes careers. You falsify like a big level crime. You're the fucking hero of like the largest crime that ever hit Texas or something shit like that. Right. And you're like, you know, and it's the crime that you set up. <laughs> like, yeah, no, a lot of the times it is, you know, it's, just like, it's crazy because like, you know, like you see a lot of this stuff happen. And, you know, when you start looking into some of this stuff, that's exactly what's, what's occurring when you, people start dating and looking at the details and look back into, you know, into it. And, and you're, you're, that's what we find with some of these situations. I mean, you know, I, I don't just, we don't just, I, you know, I also cover like the whole, um, the whole uh, 19 uh, narrative that has been going on the last couple of years, you know, and I've uh, been exposing that as well. So like, I've seen that on that level too. Yeah. Well, it's all the same people, left, right, Democratic, Republican. It don't none of that matters. They are all on the same team. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. All play. They're people they're in power, for themselves. Yeah, people in power are are working. And I'm, and one thing I want to say together, like I've said before, like they're friends, and I don't really mean that in the same sense. Like I would say they're allies, and an ally isn't friend someone that has and, and, and yeah, well, friend of me. <laughs> It, an ally doesn't have someone's back over any circumstances. An ally only has someone's back as well, as long as they are beneficial to them. And so, right. like, that's a really good way to 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 acknowledge, like, these people that are involved in corruption, human trafficking, money laundering, etc., is that they're is that they're happy to assist each other as well as it as long as it benefits them. But as soon as there's something that is non-beneficial, like they're happy to throw someone under the bus because they're not friends. They're not like, right. you know, it's not like we, we got your back till like to the grave or something like that. It's, it's, you know, we, we're all screwing. Each, it's like they're even the people involved, like you have different like sex, uh, you have different groups. And so you have one group that is screwing over another group involved in trafficking and they're both involved in trafficking and they both help each other out, but they're both also trying to throw each other under the bus. So when shit gets real, 
look what we've been doing the whole time. And it's it's like that. It's not like that with two groups. Yeah, five, to make themselves it's, look good. Yeah. Right. yeah, it's like the attorneys. They don't. It doesn't matter if they're throwing you in the pit or pulling you out of the pit. It doesn't matter. They're still gonna make their money and go yeah. about their way with their agenda. It's it doesn't matter. They'll do either yeah, side of that. It, that's what it sounds like to me. You know, exactly. Um, it's, it's, it's a stepping stone. About, they're not people. They're not human anymore. These people do not have souls. These people that are doing this to other yeah. people trafficking children blackmailing children these people are soulless they've they are completely no lost touch with they're not made up they're not made up of what i'm made up because i'm human and humans don't wake up to hurt other humans it's just we don't wake up in the morning and be like i'm gonna hurt so that's not it's not encoded in our dna this is that they are no longer human a lot of people that I like a lot of people that I've been involved with in my trafficking, et cetera. And then as an adult, like a lot of people are, it's, it's, and this is how I've come to realize how a lot of like major horrific things throughout history have happened is that people, a lot of these people are groomed. Like they do not see other people as human. Like they are human. It's conditioned they, into them. They, they are the, the real, the real heroes or whatever sent from whatever, either either religious or non-religious entity to hear to do whatever they need to on earth to do what's right or whatever and a lot of these uh people they have been groomed to see like well this person these people they don't do this the right way they're not they're not like real mm, like uh patriots they're not real not real whatever we're like you know because these people manipulate people from all different backgrounds religious non-religious even from christianity to to islam to hindu it's it's manipulated people from all different groups and so what they do is they get individuals and they get within their psych, uh, psychology and they tell people without outside of this very specific group of people None of these other people are human. All these other people are terrorists. They're all bad people. They're all dangerous. They all do gross stuff. Uh, and so- It comes down to, to conditioning people to devalue human life. Yeah, yeah. And then you get these people to where they're later on in the, in the position once they're uh, successfully groomed to a certain stage. And then you're like, okay, now we have to have you do actual bad stuff for the greater good. Like you have to traffic kids because they're going to be trafficking kids and we got to traffic kids because then we can use the kids that we're trafficking to catch the bad ones, to catch the bad people and stuff like that. Whatever, whatever tricks they need to do, the lie yeah. people, sometimes it's just like, no, we actually are trafficking kids and it's just to, to fuck or to fuck around. It's not for a good reason, but majority no, there's no, people, there's no good reason to traffic kids period. In, in, no, in yeah, all no, I, yeah uh, I, I know, I know that, but from their, from like an, right. no, no, I, I, I get what you're saying. Room. I'm just, yeah. just specifying for our viewers. But that's like the police, you know, you don't get to break the law to enforce the law. It's this like same difference. You know, you don't, you don't get to do that. It's not right. Um, people just haven't um, had to think for themselves, yeah. you know, and when you break off and you start having your own thoughts and your own, you know, you're using your own mind, mind, you know, then you see this shit so clearly. And once you see it, you don't, stop you know you'll see it and you'll see how the child trafficking is like everywhere you look there's no no denying it once you see it and it's everywhere it really is i i mean it's sick did the things that you know you walk i mean into child store. child trafficking human yeah child trafficking, human trafficking uh money laundering i i mean just it's, it's stuff that's i mean even assassinations bribery etc this isn't stuff that's rare it's very common it's just the United States is, is very, yeah. The United, United States is very unique in the sense is that it's one of the few countries in the world where I feel that it's almost like the elementary school for real life. Like it's almost like a, like it a safety a hazard. It really is. It's really sad. It's really yeah. sad to see to see it have decayed to this state. You know. Yeah, which which I mean, it could be true for most, if not all nations, but it's just my perspective for being in the United States almost exclusively is that I is that I see the United States as like people are, are so separated from communities and each other and just all these different like tons of modes of manipulation, whether it be from Democratic or Republican sources, uh, like official sources, whatever. Um, I'm in complete agreement are, are with just, you. Yeah, pe people are just disincent, dis they they people are just not familiar with what like I I can be I just feel like people are just unfamiliar with how things work 
in a, a realistic level in the United States. Like people just think that again, like Paul, like, oh, if you want to become president, you just be a good person, get good grades and have a, a good, like, I don't know, sense of morality or something and good planning or whatever, and you'll become president or something. Yeah, it's it's nothing's like, no, ever that simple. It's, it's like, no, you don't get, you're not, you're not allowed to be in a position of power in the United States unless you're under someone's thumb. And that is not yep. like, that's not hyperbole. I'm not hyperbole. No, that's hyperbole. very true. You're absolutely yeah. right. It's, absolutely it's, 100% and, correct on that. And not just within government, I'm talking within government, business, you're not allowed to be, and this is what, this is like a little um, speculation on my end, but not, not really. You're not allowed to, to have billions or trillions of dollars, let's say billions or millions for most wealthy people. You're not allowed to have millions and billions of dollars without being under someone's thumb, without being heavily watched. You right. have the potential, you have such a resource to change not only your country, but any country. The com- some countries' GDP doesn't reach over a million dollars. You have the ability to do so much with with that much money uh, that you, people in power are aware that you could fuck shit up for them if if you do pack them to do something uh, that they don't that could be out in the open could be easily done, but no, but no one's allowed to do it. And so people are just going to be funneled away from this resolution as much yep. as possible. Well, what they want you, what they don't want you to know is um, they really have no power. It's the people with the power. They don't yep. want them to know that. And, you know, once more people, 3% is all we need, figure that out. They're done. Like, yep. Well, and, we, we, we got to wrap it up here soon, but I would like to give everybody opportunity to uh, put in a few last words before we uh, end, end the set the live session for tonight, but we'd love to have you back on. Definitely. Yeah, yeah definitely. No, I- I would love to come back on. I'd say whenever y'all, I mean, I, I usually don't reach out to people very often. Uh, so I'd say whenever y'all want to reach out to me again, I'm more than happy to hear from y'all and I'll, I'll, uh, you know, bounce messages back and forth. Um, cool. especially, especially within the next week, I, I, you know, if you want to do another one for the next week, I'm happy to, but I'm, I might not be as responsive as I could be because this next seven days or six days is just going to be like everywhere for me. Yeah. Understandable. Um, Completely understandable. And then, um, but as far as like, I guess, closing statements for myself, like, uh, I can get my, my TikTok is traffic, uh, TikTok at traffic TikTok. I have two, uh, with the same name and I have another one at greater global goals. Um, you know, if people want to go to that, follow me there. If people want to assist in, uh, like strategically and helping me not only with my asylum, but other things, uh, afterwards, uh, please send me information with either things that have personally happened to you, either just in comments, like just comment on one of my videos or something like this happened to you or this happened to someone you know. If you have documentation for anything that's happened to you to you on a legal basis, uh, video, documents, audio, et cetera, please uh, email that to me as it will be assistive in, assistive in my situation. Or if you're aware of stuff that has happened on a local, state, or federal level, both uh, in modern days, like, you know, 2020 to 2022 to 1980s, 1960s, uh, stuff that's like government documented, stuff that's, you know, um, uh, got documented by journalists or individuals, et cetera. All that stuff just shows consistency of incompetence um, within uh, the system, et cetera. That's beneficial to me in my situation. And if people want to assist economically, uh, like fiscally, uh, mm, it helps with my housing, it helps with my food, it helps with my transportation, um, et cetera. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think that's the gist of it. <laughs> so it's probably not the great, great, uh, great way to wrap it up. What about you, Johnny? Any last words? Um, well, I was going to say for your transparency, we have to be transparent for the light to shine. Or the light will never shine on the truth. So yeah, it is 100%. very important to be transparent. Um, and I just want to thank you for coming onto the show and responding back to me. Um, I was really excited to talk to you. I just thought that you had some insight, especially something that I needed to know to help my daughter in her, her situation. Um, I have to try to get her out, you know, so that's yeah. the, the battle. And so, more than happy to 
and more than happy to talk more about it to assist more. Like I know my stuff is kind of all over the place. I, I do feel that there's stuff that they're all over me. the place. Every story yeah. is. <laughs> yeah, it's all right though. That's just, that's just, that's just, you know, that's, that's, that's nature. That's human. You know, that's just the reality of the situation. Oh, yeah, you know, the beast of this. <laughs> yep. Chaos. They love the chaos. It keeps they do. You in under control. You know, you don't know which way to turn. Right. But, um, I just want to thank you for coming out. Thanks, Steve, yes. for putting us on tonight. I Definitely. appreciate both of you guys for thank um, you, being Kevin. Thank me. you, Dottie. You're welcome. Um, I just want to keep bringing awareness and uh, you know try to save some of these kids. That's my goal, and take out this courthouse here in St. Louis. Uh, awesome. and not and not go to jail for seven years. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's, no, that's right. The best thing. Right. You know, I, yeah, I, hope hear, this one. I hope to hear good things from your situation, Dottie. I hope I know you said you. A, you have court this coming Friday. Or I have maybe family was... court this Friday and then criminal court in June. Mm, yeah, I, I hope everything goes as, as beneficial as as good as it possibly can go. Uh because it's uh, it's it is a I don't know, a sad reality that good people every day bad things happen to them. I just hope that you are an exception to uh, that rule. And I hope you uh, you do well with with uh, with your with your situation, uh, Kevin. Um, we wish you luck, and uh, we definitely will be in touch, and uh, definitely be doing some follow ups in the near future. So uh, I, that was such a great great show, you guys. I appreciate you guys both coming on, especially you, Kevin, because uh, you got some really good insight, and we've been wanting to get some uh, some victims who, uh, of child trafficking, you know, that were had gone through this, as so you can get some get it from their perspective, and so you you help us start that. Thank you. No, yeah, yeah. No, nope. again, happy to be on, happy to come on whenever again in the future as, as much as possible, really. Um, just let, yeah, just let me know. Uh, I, we'll I, do. I, uh, it's great being on. I, uh, I hope you all have a good night. You, you too. too. You. And don't forget to check out um, our bonfire um, site, uh, bonfire uh, shirt sites for uh, for info when new news. And we got a couple others out there. So go on info when new news dot com and you can get the link there and uh, show your support for uh, for the art for what we're trying to do here, people. Yeah, no, no problem. Thank you. Take care. All right, everybody have a good night.